welcome back. Hey, once again, thank you guys for making it uh, through 100 episodes with me. I really appreciate that you guys have done that. Uh, we're at, I think, 24, 25 million views on the YouTube channel, and I didn't ever think any. I remember they uh, when John Orlando asked me to do a podcast here, I was like, man, I don't really want to know if people want to do this. Uh, and it tur it's worked out terrifically, so I really appreciate you guys doing this. Also, all you people watching on uh, Spotify and Apple, man, I'm, I'm really impressed, so I really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for the kind words. Uh, I've been traveling, and I've seen several people who watch the podcast, and it's really funny to me when someone's grandmother or mom watches the podcast. That is also really interesting to me when I get that a lot. Um, the other thing I, I want to uh, point out is this is an episode that I've been wanting to do for a while. So I have my entire team from Men of Action come out here. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce him. The first, he has a master's in financial mathematics. He is the CEO of MOA and one of the founding partners. This is Miguel Colon. How you doing, Miguel? Doing excellent. Right. Thank you for having me, man. Beautiful. Woo. Beautiful. He is a college dropout. Twice. He Twice. started seven businesses and one of them finally worked. He is also mm -hmm. a founding member of Men of Action. He is the CMO of MOA. It is Grant Jordan. What's up, Mike? There Thanks we go. Me. Nice. Nice. And we have, she is the owner of Brand Social Consulting, and she manages the Men of Action content team. It is Char Modell. Hey, Char. Thank you for having me. Yes, mm -hmm. love it. And he is also another college dropout. You're going to see a theme here. Uh, <laughs> turns turns two-time two college dropout, turns mm -hmm. sales professional, uh, and he is the MOA closer manager. It is Tyler Shonick. How are you doing, Tyler? <clears throat> I'm doing good. Nice, nice, nice. We did it. Okay, beautiful. I want to point out, first off, we're a company that works virtually. We have never all been in the same room at the same time. This is the first time this has ever happened. <laughs> If you have a company and you started, you probably realize this is probably more and more likely occurrence mm -hmm. that we all like sitting at the same table is just not that common. Uh, Miguel, you are in Medellin, Colombia. Grant, you're in Austin, Texas, which the irony is that I lived in Austin and went to college in Austin and my family's from Medellin and I don't live in either one of those cities. I live in Las Vegas. Uh, Tyler, you live next door to me mm -hmm. and Char, you live somewhere uh, we don't know. We're not yep. going to dox Char. <laughs> dox Char, Char, we're not going to dox her. She lives somewhere. Uh, awesome. All right. So th here's the thing. I want to ask you guys, because I've talked about it a million times on the show. And for those of you who are watching this, one of the things we want to get to is how did we get from, uh, this is our story. How did we get from 40K a month or 100K a month to where we are now, which is 10X that number? How did we get to that point? And we want to go over exactly how we did it and then also explain why we started this, why we started the podcast, how we use the podcast, how we built our funnels, all this kind of stuff. For those of you who are interested in it, uh, see the inner workings and how the sausage is made with our company, Men of Action. So first off, uh, I want to ask you guys, because I've talked about this a million times, uh, you two, why did we start the company? How, how did this happen? Oh, man. Well, this kind of one thing led to another where it started off where during uh, COVID, we built an Instagram course for someone else. You started guest speaking in that, started to build the following. And I think, uh, you know, for the last 20 years, you've been excelling in your social life and kind of all areas of your life. Most people probably don't know, like self-made millionaire in your 20s, you know, red carpet host ideal social life, ideal dating life, good physique and stuff like that. So uh, guys really resonated with you. And eventually we started building a product around that. And then one thing kind of led to another, but pretty much men of action is all about helping, you know, a thousand guys and we're already past that point. But originally it was help a thousand men achieve their idea, their ideal lifestyle, their ideal dream um, and become the best version of themselves. We were happy doing a hundred K a month and and now we have 2,000 guys in the group. In the, Honestly, in the I was group. happy making 40K yeah, a month. Yeah, that was like, our first month 40, goal. That was our initial that was our first goal. Month was goal. Like 40 k 40,000 a month. And we I was super happy. stoked. Like every single day I got to wake up, I got to do the thing that I was already yeah. doing. And now I got to get paid for it because I had started six other companies that had just absolutely tanked and I lost <laughs> money. And then now I actually get to start something that I enjoy. I work on every single day. And um, it's just an absolute dream to be able to wake up every single day and see the transformations that we uh, create in people's lives mm -hmm. and then get to mm -hmm. work with a team, like a culture, like the, the, the company culture that we have, I think everybody else wants to replicate yeah. because we attract such high level people, both in terms of um, team members and the types of clients that we work with. It's just honestly fantastic to be able to be around these people every single day. They challenge me. You guys challenge me so much. We challenge our clients and we just continue to grow. Yeah. There is no emperor has no clothes on. They will tell mm. me to shut the fuck up and I'm wrong <laughs> when I'm wrong. And I appreciate that because this is one of the things like when you look at a lot of times with the Sam Bankman Freed, Logan Paul, you know, s situations where guys like really drastically miscalculate what they're doing. Um, you know, Tom Brady and, and uh, Sha Shaquille O'Neal pumping FTX that we see people that are just getting bad advice. And I 
truly believe because I have some friends that, that are like this. I have a, a couple of my friends of mine. One of them's a billionaire, lives here. Uh, another friend of mine is a huge social media influencer. It's really scary because everyone's always going to tell them yes, mm. right? And we don't have that in this culture whatsoever. Like the sales guys come to me and be like, dude, stop talking about this. Start talking about this more. So that's that's something that's really helpful. I think that's different in this culture. And there's something I want to ask you, Tyler, because you uh, are kind of indicative of a lot of the guys who join our team, which is you went through the course. Mm -hmm. And you have previous experience with like the pickup community. So you mm -hmm. went through the course, you have that, then you went through the course. He spent and his last dollar actually on the course. Can, yeah. Can you can you go through can you go through that whole situation, your journey? Yeah, I was an ideal client. I mean, I was fresh off a breakup. I was looking around at the people I was surrounded by and I still got love for them. You know, all, all, all my friends that I grew up with, they're all great people, but I realized that, you know, at the end of the day, there was a lot of complacency in my friend group and I wanted to scale it up. So I looked around and I had been following you for years. So joining the program was inevitable at this point in my life. Like when I saw one more advertisement, you guys had hit me probably 20 times by mm -hmm. this point. Then I was like, okay, I'm getting on this call, get on with the dude, ends up, you know, asking me how much money I have. I have, you know, X amount of dollars and I end up kind of having a moment of truth where I'm like, okay, I have enough money to pay rent and that's it. And it's like middle of the month, two weeks, and I gotta make a decision to invest right then into this program or and come up with the money for rent after the fact or play it safe. And so I decided to go for it. I jumped in. I was like, I know I want this and I know that taking this risk on myself is gonna be the best thing for me. So I decided to do it, started doing Instacart, DoorDash on top of two jobs. I was uh, in a sales position previously, and I was a group fitness instructor. I was barely making enough money to afford my life. Like there was multiple times where I was making decisions whether to buy more food or put gas in my car to get to work. And that pressure that I put on myself, like J. Cole says, pressure makes diamonds, mm. right? And so at the end of the day, I ended up pulling it off, made the first couple of payments, got great results. And then when the spot opened up on the team, it was like, it was like a dream come true. It was like yeah. my passion for sales and my passion for the Men of Action program sure. just came into perfect alignment. Let me ask you something. So this is something I try to express to people and I, I think a lot of people don't understand. So we got this concept from Alex Becker, uh, which is sell them what they want and then teach them what they need. A lot of guys come in the program and they're just, just looking at the girls, obviously. Like that's what we have in our advertisement. And they come in there and there's something more. Do you, do you, did you uh, align with that? 100%. 100%. And I always talk to the guys that, you know, come on to the calls with me and they'll ask that. They're like, is this just about girls? And I'm like, look, girls at the front works really good for our marketing. I'll be honest. Obviously, we work with men. Men love pretty women. But once you get in and I'll, I'll share my screen and show them the inside of the course and like some of the stuff that we're teaching, they're like, holy shit, this is so much more than that. We're mm -hmm. hitting every single pillar of this guy's life and he's going to be surrounded by a group of men that are committed to growing in every area of their life as well. So, I mean, even for the stuff that we don't teach, you can hit up guys in the program mm -hmm. and they'll help you out with it. Yeah. So like I've seen dudes in our program lose their job, let somebody know in the program and then get hired at a dude's company that runs sure. a business in our program. Yeah, we've got guys like uh, uh, fuck Leonard, right? You know, if you want to do Amazon FBA, you just go talk mm -hmm. to Leonard, right? And exactly. we have, there's a bunch of guys that have gone through the course and done different things. Mm -hmm. And then we send them there. Cause the thing is, and, and Grant, this is a conversation you and I've had several times. It's like, we aren't making this a business course, but so many guys that's helped them with their business. Uh, Paul, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his last name right now. We have so many, he's an accountant and he's got, he's hosts oh, yeah, Zoom yeah. calls. And he's made so much uh, money from doing that. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys have done that. Obviously, Raj got hired at Merrill Lynch. There's a yeah. lo there's a lot of our clients that use our content, but we don't make this a make money course because yeah. when we do that, we end up getting a ton of refunds because yeah, people think a, yeah. people think it's just that. Exactly. Like what I tell people when they come into the program is like, we'll give you a million dollar network, but you're not going to make a million dollars with us just because like you're going to indirectly like be surrounded by millionaires, high level player, the women that you want to be around. And like, you're going to be the local celebrity in your city, but you're not going to directly make that money. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that are on the come up right now and they're, you know, they're working hard, they're working two jobs and then they have their side hustle on the side. Like those people need a direct, this is what you do. This is where you click the buttons in Facebook ads. This is how you drag the, the thing over on Shopify. This is how you make a store, right? We don't teach you that, but we're going to put you in environments and mm -hmm. the community that we have at Men of Action. Like everybody is just a high level player yep. and we do really attract just fantastic <clears throat> people. So it's like, it's like, it's like that difference where you're just going to come in and have that million dollar network. We're not just going to make a million dollars with yeah. us. 
Uh, I just talked to Shervin the other day, and he's you know obviously doing really well yeah, since f- financially. Uh, and he one of the things he told me he goes, hey man, one of the things I didn't realize when I joined the company is like the high, meeting all these high status guys that mm-hmm. I network with is actually like more important. And I was like, Shervin, yeah. it's awesome that you say that, but if I ran ads that said that, <laughs> no one would buy this <laughs> fucking yeah, course. Knows. No one would buy the course. Of course, what you're saying is true, but it's one of these things where it's like you have to make the children eat the broccoli and drink milk, or you know get their calcium yeah. so they'll grow, but they just want to eat the dessert and you're just you're just like okay here's the dessert here's the dessert and then you keep you use it as a reward to get these guys in to help them with questions that they didn't even know to ask and so that's one been one of the most rewarding mm-hmm. things about this company uh we we it's called men of action char i want to ask you what is your uh your experience joining us being part yeah. of this culture being part of this uh being part of this program it's terrible it's terrible <laughs> yeah. yeah no i'm just kidding uh, you know what? The, the thing is, is that um, what I and I love that we're doing this podcast. Yeah. Is people don't really get to see how the team works mm. together. Yeah. And I fell in love with the team. You guys working with you has been awesome. And, you know, I've worked with a lot of high level people and it's been great. It's very different from person to person to be a part of different teams. Yeah. But with this team, it's like a kind of like a family unit. And even though we put out all this viral content, you know, I oversee the content. I see it going through. It is our job to help you grow. Yeah. But that's not the basis or the foundation of anything you're selling really at all. Yeah. And so when people ask me, they're like, oh, what, you know, what, what it's like, what is it like to work with Michael or men of action? I'm like, these guys are like fierce entrepreneurs. Yeah. Being a part of this team is like being in a mastermind. Like you can't help but level up because mm. if you don't, then you don't get to be a part of the team. And so I love that you guys gave me a chance because at the time I had worked with somebody else and helped her grow significantly. And she's, she's big now. Yeah. And you saw that and you were like, you know, we're looking for somebody to do social media. Are you interested? And well, I, we actually yeah. asked you, someone gave us a quote and I ran it by you. Yeah. And they were like, do you want to do this instead? And yeah. there was like certain, and then we, you know, we had you do it. I was, there was no question from my standpoint, whether or not you were organized enough. Yeah. I knew you'd been doing this for a long time. I've actually known you probably longer than almost anyone I've known in Vegas. There's a yeah. few people I've known as like, like very few. I met yeah. you like 11 years ago. Um, but like these, these, these things that have happened, uh, you know, having you come on and do this. And one of the things that I had an issue with initially, but it was kind of, um, Brad Lee who talked me out of this is you guys know the Brad Lee story where he's talking to Grant Cardone. He owns part of this, this offer that Grant is putting out and he sees these ads from Grant Cardone every five seconds on Facebook. It's just Grant constantly. <laughs> like he's doing more of a push, more than here in me in my garage with Ty Lopez, way more than that. Grant is spending maybe a hundred, whereas uh, Ty spent somewhere between 15 and 20 million on advertisement. Uh, uh, Grant's probably spent a hundred million dollars. And uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, the, Br- Brad calls up Grant. He goes, hey man, you know, I got a piece of this. I may have to pull out or I may have to block you because I'm seeing you too much. And Grant goes, you don't buy any way, motherfucker. And he just hangs the phone up. <laughs> and, and the thing is, Grant Cardone on paper is a billionaire. <clears throat> and I was like, man, are we exposing ourselves too much? Because that is kind of the theme. If you, in fact, if, if I talk to Bulzerian, he's like, yeah, some of these guys post too much. And I'm like, I think when you, uh, I think when he was doing IG in the beginning, you could post too much. I don't think you can now. I just feel like it's this arms race to see who can put out more content. And the other person who helped me realize that was Pearl, who does 30 shorts a day. A day, Damn. and I was like, man, I was like, and we, and I was like, man, am I out there too much? And then I go out there. This is the other thing that's really crazy, is that because of the team that that Char has been able to put together and manage, um, I'll go to places and I'll show. We get a disproportionately high number of shares compared mm-hmm. to likes, so it's mm-hmm. very clear that some of our content is mm-hmm. controversial. But I was showing this to. Um, Dan Fleischman. And I was like, at one point we had 55,000 shares and 33,000 likes in a month. Mm-hmm. You, imagine that, con- like, imagine that ratio. Mm-hmm. That means there's a lot of people who hate my content, like fucking <laughs> hate my content. 33,000, mm-hmm. guys, I'm not that big. 33,000 shares and 55,000 likes. 33,000 shares and 150,000 likes would make sense. Mm-hmm. But that, that means people are like, a bunch of people are sharing my content and not commenting, not fucking uh, liking they're afraid, it. They're afraid they're people fr- will see exactly. them like the content. <laughs> That's exactly too. right. Because when it's controversial, <laughs> other people are watching what you do. And you do have some, you know, there's people that follow you that may not engage with you because they don't want other people to see it. Yeah, that is that has happened a lot. Yeah. That's one of the things like I was like getting discouraged and then I go I go to an airport and everyone's like, "Oh man, I love your content." Dude, I had the uh one of the, I'm someone who works for the Stars. I'm not going to say his name. Mm-hmm. He comes up to me and he's very high up at the star, at the Stars, I'm sorry. At the uh at the the uh, Golden Knights. Someone who works for the Golden Knights, very high up. He comes up to me, he goes, "Hey man." He's like really secretly he's whispering to me. He goes, "I love your content. Mm-hmm. Your content's awesome." <laughs> he goes, 
goes, my wife doesn't like it very much. And I was like, <laughs> he goes, anytime you're at a Golden Knights game, just come up to the thing and thing and I'll, I'll let you in and we can hang out. And I was like, and I almost felt bad because the same thing happened with Brad Lee. Brad Lee's wife was super upset about something where I was totally, totally mischaracterized. And then we can talk about this in a yeah, second. Yeah. I, so what will happen is that some of the people who are content creators that aren't us will make videos where they sort of misrepresent what I said. They'll only take the sa second half of the content. And by the way, this is what happened to Andrew Tate as well. And so there's a video that looks like I'm telling everyone's daughter to join OnlyFans. Uh -huh. Of course I'm not. <laughs> I'm just pointing out how much money the people make on OnlyFans. You know what I'm saying? Like I've actually made, made videos where I'm like, it's probably not a good idea to do this. If you're gonna do this, like pre please understand it's gonna affect the rest of your life. But they watch this video and she's like, I can't believe you. Uh, Brad Lee's wife told, which by the way, I've had a conversation with her since. Brad Lee's wife told Bradley, I can't believe you had that guy on your show. This is terrible. I don't want our daughters doing OnlyFans. Why did you do this? And I'm like, that's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. But can you talk about this? Like yeah. we've, we have this struggle all the time yeah. where it's like, what is viral? And then what grows the business? Yeah. And I just want to point out for anyone listening, like, you know, I'm a woman on the team and I'm pretty conservative with the way I live and, and how, who I am. I'm not your the general population. You won't come women. on Access Vegas. I will not. <laughs> you'll not see me on Access Vegas. And I say that like you guys are super respectful. So like the the content that is really viral, I get its purpose. And it's honestly, it's brought in some good clients and some maybe we've not made any sales off of. Yeah. But I'm here really trying. I want to build out the brand part that really is you behind it. Yeah. Without it coming off boring because I understand. But there's a huge struggle story behind it. Like it's very empowering to hear. Um, and I think people need to hear more of it. And so like, I'm here to sort of go, okay, in the beginning, I was just there to sort of get the content in place. Now I'm working on the branding because it, people don't know what you do all the time. This drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I thought Michael just had a <clears throat> podcast or red pill podcast. And I was like, no, Michael, like that's not him at all. Actually, he really respects women. Um, he values mm -hmm. women. We teach this all the time. Um, it's not coming through on some of the panels you choose to be on. Yeah. Um, so I would really like to fill that spot of like, look, actually we value women. We talk about the relationships, you know, we also, you charity all the time. You're yeah. always, yeah. you know, partnering with charities. It's not really and your like content. thousands of female friends, yeah. which would not and be the cats, case. Yeah. Rescuing cats. It's not truly representative of you. And it does bug me because I specialize in personal branding. Yeah. I really want to make that change mm. over time, but it's <clears> like, where, where does the viral content fit in? And I think when you fill that hole, then people sort of make up their mind as to who you are and they can kind of see it and they're okay with that. Yeah. They like to hear the banter, but then mm -hmm. they also can kind of see like, oh, that's not really the case of men of action at all. Yeah. It's just like a piece of it, you know? This is what I've seen. If you get popular enough, they forgive everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, like Wolf of Wall Street. Do you remember the scene yeah. at the end of the movie where he punches his wife in the stomach and then takes his kid while he's high on cocaine and gets I into a car? I just watched that movie, yeah. Like, that did happen. He admits to it. His wife admits to him punching him. And we love the fuck out of this guy. We do. That's like not. No, no, I'm not saying it's us. What but I'm I would never. No, I would never do. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm not saying I would ever do that. My point is. My point is. I'm trying my, to fix my, the brand right, over right, no, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. My point is like OJ Simpson. I don't know if you guys have seen. Oh, yeah. He's doing TikTok videos with people. Like my point is not that because we haven't done anything wrong. <clears> my point is if people <clears> have a mischaracterization of me and I get popular enough, like Joe Rogan. You know how many people were talking shit about Joe Rogan, but once he gets popular enough. All of them would drop everything to be on a show. You are like Bernie Sanders, like any. Do you understand Joe Rogan having uh, Joe Biden or Donald Trump on? He's doing them a favor. That is the only case where you're going to see that. And if they disagree with anything, like Joe says, it doesn't matter because he's so popular. There's a there's a guy here as an influence. I'm not going to say his name, but guy had been charged with several felonies. Uh, you know, he, just total bad dude, comes out of jail. Nobody wanted to hang out with this guy. Nobody wanted to affiliate with him. Then he has two celebrities do a wedding at his house and all of a sudden everyone's hanging out with him again. Just being popular fixed everything. So from my standpoint, what, what I, one thing I realized is like sitting there trying to defend myself just doesn't work. It just yep. doesn't. People have this interpretation of you no matter what. But if you just become more successful for whatever reason, because we're hairless murder apes, people just all of a sudden forgive everything you've said. Yep. And it's while at some, one point I find it sickening, at the other point I just realize it's the the only option that we have. Do you guys understand that at some point, everyone wants to go on Ed Milet's show. Everyone got, wants to go, Greg, Greg Cardone is a Scientologist. Everyone wants to go on a show. They don't care. It's like, hey, Grant, what do you think about psychiatry? I think it's fucking bullshit. You know, like, but we'll still go on the show because if you're popular enough, it just gets to a point where like nobody cares about anything else. And it's it's one of these things where well, I appreciate you, you know, trying to fix the brand and I hope, you know, hopefully we're able to do that. But it's one of these things where we just on the line. Mm -hmm. And what I always try to say is things that are factually based but that actually makes people more angry. 
Yeah. You no, know? I mean, it's not even fix the brand. I think the wording on that is wrong. I yeah. think it's more about giving brand clarity. Sure. So that way, when people hit your page, they yeah. know, look, I dominate this area. Yeah. This is the guy who dominates this area. He doesn't dominate just on podcasts and panels. Yeah. He's, you know, he knows social circle. He's yeah. the yeah. man for that. On, if you scroll back on Mike's uh, yeah. Instagram feed, like back <laughs> in 2020, it's literally all girls, mm -hmm. events, parties, like all the time. Yeah. yeah. And like a good, like to peel back the iron curtain a little bit, like tomorrow is Mike's birthday. Happy early birthday, by the For way. Sure. And uh, there are like four, five guys, like all the guys going to that party are like in this room plus like one more. And yeah. then it's like 80 other girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So like, that's what Mike's life is. Like typically, like you typically hang out with a lot of women. You have a ton of female friends. When we went to Paradise Challenge and we're going to Swimsuit USA in a couple of weeks, like you introduced me to so many other women. And I feel like I've met so much of your social circle knowing you for almost three, mm -hmm. three or four years now. Mm -hmm. And I still meet new women all the time and like hundreds of them. And so it's just like, it's phenomenal the amount of like the network that you've created. And um, honestly, like I've never met or seen anybody yeah. with the type of network that you have. Like it's honestly super impressive. And I'd honestly like to ask you like, what is like, why did this like come about? Like, why, why did you see this, like this, like gap? Like, Hey, you know, I don't want to hang out with these guys. I want to hang out with, with these women over here or mm. these men over here. Like, yeah. why was that gap? And then like, how did like men of action even fit into that? So there's a couple things. Um, I will, I will definitely tell you that me, uh, being a DJ at a strip club 25 years ago and actually seeing like a truth between the way men and women treat each other. Now, obviously that is not indicative of all men and women. That is probably mm -hmm. the more toxic nature of men and women. But just getting to see that Disney, the church and my family was telling me things that just weren't wrong. If I just be nice to girls, they'll be nice to be back. That wasn't true, right? That was a red pill moment for me, even though I'm not, I'm red pill adjacent. And it's funny because that, at the same time that was happening in my life, Rollo was writing his first book, right? It was a, around the same time in 03. Um, and so, or he started writing his first blog post, then the first book came out in 2013. Uh, and at the same time, that's when Neil Strauss was writing the game back in 03, 04, some, somewhere around there. And so from that situation, that was the first point where I came to a realization that the what, the dynamics between men and women, number one, were different. And number two, the way we, we operate with each other, while it can be harmonious, is often toxic. And we should at least be honest about that, right? I was seeing signs of domestic abuse, drug use, stuff like that. And it was the first time I'd ever seen it up close. The second thing for me that happened was in 07, I started hanging out with, uh, I was exposed to guys in the pickup community probably 05. Uh, and then I started hanging out with Mystery and Matador and those guys probably in 09. But in 07, I lived in... In, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And while I was there, I met a club, a, a group of club promoters and these club promoters, they did this weird thing. They had this thing called Armada magazine. If anybody from Vegas or from uh, Atlanta, you guys know who I'm talking about. Max Smith. I still talk to Max. He's awesome. I would, I would listen to pickup artists say toxic shit about women and sit there and lie about who they were sleeping with. And then I would go out with this guy named Max and this other dude named Rocky, and we, uh, his name's Josh Garrett, and we would go out and they'd have spiky hair and they'd have, like, these guys were like in shape and they wear cool clothes or whatever, and they would just wave their hand and 70, 80 girls would show up to everything they were doing. They were always dating the prettiest girls. Like it was very clear to me that one group of people was saying something and full of shit and another group of people was actually living it and not selling anything. And I was like, I wonder if someone could teach that you know, like right now, there is no course on how to be a club promoter. There's not, there's nothing, there's nothing like it, right? We have a, a very, very popular club promoter in New York is one of my clients right now. He's out with Leonardo DiCaprio right, mm -hmm. right now. He's doing his own thing. And this kid's like 20 years old, 21 years yeah, old. Yeah, he's crushing it. Honestly, I remember when he joined the program and I was like, and now he's just absolutely destroying it. And it's so yeah. cool to yeah. see his progress. Yeah, <clears throat> it, it, it's pretty amazing. So so when you when you see that, I was like, okay, there's something here. I don't want to be a club promoter, and I don't want to teach guys to be a club promoter, but there's an aspect of what they're doing that works better than what I see these other guys doing. The get drunk, drink a beer, eat a pizza, watch a football game, and just hit on some girl while you're drunk and fat wearing a bat football jersey. And then the other guy was like, be this so suave like, like Lothario that goes to the club and just hits on every girl, promising fecundity and fucking long-term sexual commitment while at the same time fucking nine other girls. Like somewhere there's, there's a piece here that's missing. And then um, when I met, uh, you know, I started hanging out with uh, Tyler Dirt, T Tyler uh, Owen Cook and RSD. I started going out with them every weekend, probably 2011 after I got out, of, or 2012 when I got out of the military. And me and Tyler would go out every weekend and hang out. And he introduced me to Ty Lopez. And mm. Ty had a book club. And in the book club, he had every book by Dr. David Buss in the book club. So I start reading Dr. Buss. After the second book, I'm like, this guy's a longhorn? Fuck yes. I'm, he's a Texas longhorn. This is awesome. And I started reading Dr. Buss. And he started talking about, at the, at the end of Evolution Desire, he talks about men creating um, teams, uh, men consorting with other men in order to gain access to resources, to gain access to protection, and to gain access to women. And I was like, oh, 
this fits in our evolution. Does that make sense? So I saw it personally with my own eyes, the dynamic between men and women. Number two, I saw that the networking aspect of it gains you incredible levels of access. And then number three, there's actually books about you know natural selection that show that our ancestor did this thing. So this is a real thing. It's never gonna go out of style and it fits in our characteristics as homo sapiens and it will never go away. And so this is evergreen content, right? So that's where I came to it. And then the fourth thing was, once the red pill community got started and there's still like still remnants of, of pickup, the whole thing became women are the enemy that you're figuring out in order to conquer the enemy to get the vagina. Like, yeah, it became this like really toxic yes. community. I, yeah. I was like super deep into it too. And it was yeah. very, like it started off from such a wholesome yes. place. Like, hey, we're just lonely men. Like we want to get there. Yeah. And then it turned into this just like really nasty, like spit on women, call them dogs and bark at them. And it was just like, it was really terrible. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, a lot of us came through that and we, and we all got out of it. And yeah. then you started, you know, where, with where you're at right now. So yeah. there were, there were some, one thing I will add is just like meeting you completely changed my life. I know you have a debate yeah. here coming up with cold approach for a social circle. And it's like kind of the combination of the both. Cause when I was just going out meeting girls, it was like Thursday, go to the bar, try to meet a girl Friday, go to the bar, try to meet a girl Saturday, go to the bar, try to meet a girl a year later, go to the bar, try to <laughs> yeah. three years later. And then when I started meeting Michael, and like one of the pillars that we teach is like high status networking. And like to me, that's one of the favorite things that we teach is and what I'm so proud of what we do is like we teach people the number one skill to accomplish any goal of life, which is like how to build a social network. Because as the saying goes, not what you know, but who you know. And, and who knows like, you. Yeah. And like to me, the way I kind of look at that is if it's not what you know, but who you know, then there's no amount of information you can ever consume that can help you accomplish a goal faster than your network, no matter what it is. And then as you know, clients see it firsthand, as their network increases, the quality of the people increases as well. So whatever your goal is, whether you need a website, whether you want to look for a business partner, whether you need a client, whether you want to get in better health, where you want to get a girlfriend, the bigger your social circle is and the better quality it is, the more likely someone in that social circle is a person or knows a person that can help you out. So like kind of learning from you, it went from kind of mainly just pursuing girls to becoming friends with the opening DJ at Access and getting backstage. You know, we were hanging out with Dan Bozerian the other day. You were speaking at Ty Lopez's event. So, a uh, shout out to Polly D. DJ Polly D is DJing at my uh, my oh. birthday uh, yeah. tomorrow night. Nice. Or, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. So, so here's the thing. Uh, another thing. Let's go back to it. I like to what I didn't. What I, I'm not saying I didn't appreciate it. It's just I guess the information wasn't around back then. Before the information went like this. There was a a, re, a message board, and the message board said, "Hey guys, here's how to get the nines and tens." And then they would give anecdotal experience. Much of it was exaggerated. Oh, okay? I remember those forums. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And, but, but like, <laughs> but like, super but like, but there was, but there was no, there was no scientific method. There was no let's debunk this thing. And also the other thing that I love about scientists is that, and this, I have a background in physics, and this is the reason why I use these the scientific method for almost everything we do in this company. We A/B test things mm. and we try to disprove our own hypothesis. One of the things I love is that if you're a scientist and something doesn't go right, you're like, oh, that's that didn't go right. That yeah. didn't go the way I thought. And that's a good thing. Yeah. You still get more grant money. Like people, you still have a job when you do an experiment and it fails, that's actually better. Right? Does that make sense? And so that's something that I loved about about this this idea. So here's the thing, going back to what you're saying, we use science when we talk about networking. When it comes to apes, we'll talk about orangutans, or I'm sorry, chimpanzees, they're their closest descendant. They're one, the, the difference between the genome and an orangutan and a homo sapien is 1.5%. There's very small difference, right? Which, which is incredible when you think about that. Mm. We are 98.5% related to, to chimpanzees. I know a lot of people are very angry that I just said that, but it is true. You guys can go look it up for yourself. <laughs> um, so here's the thing, in their, in their cause what will happen is you'll have an alpha male and the alpha male will dominate and have sex with 75% of the women in their, in their harem of, of women. And what will happen is two men who are not as alpha as him will all of a sudden come and the, these, not beta males, but just below the alpha, they'll team up together and they'll displace the alpha. Does that make sense? And so he talks, Dr. Buss talks about this in his book. And then what happens is one of the guys who used to be the alpha, he then teams up with other people and then he takes over. It's very much like tag team matches in the WWF. You know what I'm saying? And so the networking is something that is so absolutely pervasive that our ancestors that we bifurcated from six million years ago, they still have the same necessity to network in order to win. So the point mm -hmm. is, I can't go, sometimes when Brock the bartender wants to kick my ass and I'm five foot four, I can't beat Brock the bartender. But if a bunch of us that are seven Sevens go up against Brock, mm -hmm. we're going to win. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if I can get enough people on my team, then eventually we win. And so that's the concept that comes from evolution that we teach these guys. Now, here's where the concept is different and other people don't see it. What if I did this with women also? 
that's where the part they well, I understand having five I understand it with, like if I'm Kareem and I have Magic Johnson on my team with James Worthy mm -hmm. I understand I'm a better team because I've got better players with me but what I don't understand is the idea of me being a single guy and having CJ Sparks and Kindly Myers go up and talk to women and be like Michael's fucking awesome and then I don't have to do any work and those girls want to network with me ask me for my number and want to date me that concept was outside the field of anybody who was in the red pill community still and out except for Rolo he's come to the realization of it and any absolutely anybody in pickup no one was teaching this concept maybe after he got out of pickup maybe you know max was max torno was but for the most part nobody was teaching this concept and so that's where where the the difference where i saw the differences and the last thing going back to two points you, you made ago was the the last thing that i saw that was missing was when i moved to vegas and Shar, you absolutely were a part of one of these stories women were treated like cattle especially when they do atmosphere <laughs> so modeling many gigs stories. women oh were treated like cattle and my whole thing was like this like yeah. what if we could have the same amount of status and success but not treat them like cattle and they actually like some of these girls instead of always having to be compensated to hang out with us what if they actually wanted to hang out with us because we liked hanging out with them and because they had a good time I had a theory. I could have been completely wrong about this. All these club promoters slash pimps that lived in the city who treated women like fucking cattle. It was like, get your, hey, Sartain, when are you going to bring your hoes to my club? I'm like, bitch, hoes? They're not my hoes. Slavery was outlawed in 1865. Mm -hmm. They're not, I don't own anyone. When I was like, what if I don't treat them like cattle? What if I do something that they actually want to do and then just basically turn this into mean girls? We're like, you know, Regina George. <laughs> like, I tell the guys in Men of Action, <laughs> you're always looking for Regina George. If you find Regina George, then all the girls will pink with Regina and they all go to the thing that you want to go to. If Kindly Myers comes to your event, you know Lizzie Acosta will come. You know all these other, you know, Viho will come. There's like 10 girls that will always come. If Caitlin Runt comes to your event, there's like four or five girls that will always come. If CJ Sparks comes to your event, there's like Chloe Teray will come. There's a bunch of girls that will come. What about that concept? So the same concept of networking, what if we did that with women and then actually treated them the same like we treat guys and just didn't have this derision and sort of this adversarial nature to it? And it was an experiment. I didn't know if it was going to work. Yeah, but it nobody did at the work. time was doing that. Like yes. everybody yeah. was doing the total opposite of that. So yeah. you like definitely went against the grain there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was hiring from we we hired like twenty plus girls to come to the club. We yeah. we would do all of the footage of the club and do social media at the time. I don't even think it was like Instagram just launched that year yeah. or something. It's been that long. Okay, so you're, you're talking about so, so just so I worked with a company a long time ago. We hired Shar a long time ago to be an atmosphere model for us before. But, before, I, but then you had me start to hire the girls. Yes, I'm for talking sure. about how this was sort of like resonated mm. with his personal story back in the day. The yeah. reason why the girls would come to our events and say, "Yeah, I'll come do the atmosphere that night," is because they felt safe. Yeah, like we the guys weren't crummy hitting on them or saying dumb shit or you know yeah so atmosphere models yeah. in the city get a they'll get a job they'll get they'll be able to submit for certain jobs and they would always want to work for us because we yeah. didn't treat them like cattle mm. because they would have a good time and like no one would hit on them and like specifically yeah. like kind of the worst situation you could be put into as an atmosphere model is the concept of like you go somewhere and the guy just thinks he has the right to touch you you understand what yeah. i'm saying we kick them out yeah. for sure yeah. for sure that was that was sort of the issue and so w because we didn't do that and here's the thing like Guys were, will do that and be like, you're around girls. I must grope and attract, like I must grope and show intent. And therefore mm -hmm. I get girls because they're in front of me. And then the whole thing was like, if you just didn't do that, then you would actually date more girls and they'd be hotter if you just didn't do that concept. That was it. That it's was honestly all. impressive how much guys have to do, how less, how little guys have to do to like, like honestly, to to be successful with women is to not get in your own way yeah. and to not be a weirdo and so yeah. many guys go down this weirdo path and that's what i love <laughs> about what you talk about is like it's like how to not be a weirdo like 101 mm -hmm. it's like hey guys get good lighting on your face when you're on camera stop walking around when you're you know when you're on camera some of these dudes are on camera looking like they have a french mm -hmm. journalist in the back yeah. they're about to cut yeah. his head off they're like it's like dark and there's like i am from hezbollah we are going to cut his head off if you do not give us the money like it's like that's what it looks like like bitch what are you doing put the camera in your fucking put the light on your face bro you look scary you're frightening me. yeah yeah mm -hmm. true story that happened recently we were on a free call and this guy, this guy thought that his camera was off, I imagine. And he was wearing like this like white looking Speedo, like it was these gnarly underwear. He gets up and he starts walking around the room with a shotgun and he's just like pointing it around. <laughs> and we're all like on, we're all like on the, the camera, like, look, like what the fuck? And he can't hear us because he's so far away from the camera because he's walking around with like a shotgun in his underwear. And it's like, like guys don't understand that. That's like, like that's like 101, like don't be weird. That's not gonna let, like you're not gonna get girls that yeah. way. And so that's why I love the approach that you have where it's like, okay, come on. We're 
we're gonna fix your Instagram, we're gonna fix your social media, we're gonna fix how you look, we're gonna get you in shape, and then next you're gonna go to these events, you're gonna start meeting cool people, from there you're gonna get into the social snowball, and it's just gonna like compound and compound, and um, it's just it's just so it's just way more powerful because mm -hmm. you're teaching guys like how to be cool rather than like you know this whole pickup tangent. Well, the other thing that yeah. I th that I wanted to and create a great lifestyle too that attracts for sure, the people yeah. you want. Yeah. Exactly. The other thing I wanted to instill was this concept that we get a lot from trad cons is like, when are we going to go back to traditional values mm -hmm. and get rid of this social media and let's stop AI? Raise your hand if you think AI is not coming. Raise your hand if you think social media is going away. Raise your hand if you think the Overton window is just randomly going to shift to the right for the first time in the history of our country. No. I deal with things as they are. Most guys are like, how do I get the girl off of her phone because she's distracted on her phone while we're on a date? What do I do instead? Let's get on our phones together, make content. You tag me, I'll tag you. Now if she's gonna be on her phone, she's gonna be on her phone in service of me and my date that I'm gonna post on my store. Like I use, it's, it's total judo. We use all the lack of attention and this necessity that women have in order to be on their phones all the time. We use it in our favor instead of trying to fight it. Social media is something that a lot of people, like again, I just finished Why Women Deserve Left by Myron Gaines last night. I, you know, It's a really interesting book, but one of the things he talks about in the book is like, because, ever, because women today get a thousand messages for sex, like offering them, telling them how hot they are, a thousand a month, that changes their beliefs. And like, again, consider if you were a man and you got a thousand messages a month telling you how hot you are, what kind of person would you be? You'd be very difficult to deal with, et cetera, et cetera. And, and they're like, well, you should stay away from that. I don't think you should stay away from it. I think you should use whatever culture is giving you, use it, it for you. Does that make sense? If something is happening that other people don't like, you should use it in your favor. And so instead of us trying to fight social media, we go into it. We go into the toxic, whatever the vapid toxicity people think, we use it in our favor. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things that I see like when people initially join the program is they have so much resistance and you can speak on this too because you probably see this all the time on the calls like guys will get on uh, on the call and they'll be like, oh, I have to use social media like I hate social media, dude, me too. Like social media <laughs> sucks, but social mm -hmm. media is like literally how I met my girlfriend and how I met every single other girl after that. Yeah. And like, I, I would like you to talk a little bit about this, like, like what has your experience been of like, I mean, maybe you even hated social media like coming into it and then like, how did that like, like how has social media been powerful for you? Well, I mean, I kind of want to take it from a different angle because, you know, when I'm on a call with a guy and he tells me he wants to meet women, the first things that I'm going to ask him are, how is he currently meeting women? And oftentimes it's like, you know, the bar or that's T it. Tinder. That's Bumble, pretty much it. Yeah. Like dating, dating apps, but like, and they always much, complain about the quality. <laughs> yeah. They're either not getting any matches or the matches they're getting aren't yeah, quality. By the, by the way, if you, if you guys don't understand why dating apps are so bad, please read the book of numbers by Aaron Clary. You will understand how outrageously hard it is for you to meet. If you're an average person, okay. If you're fantastically good looking, it's really easy to, to use dating apps. But if you, if you look up the, the, if you read that book, he goes over a statistical quantification where he goes through all these different things. 25% of, of women suffer from a mental illness. By the way, he's doing another book for women pursuing men mm. and how difficult it is. Basically, he's saying marriage in, in, on its face is not a bad proposition. Happily married people, that's a goal to achieve. But the probability of you doing that because of the current society is next to zero. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so these guys' main problem is access, really, is what it is. When I'm talking to these guys, they're like, I have to find, how are the entry points for women to come into their life, right? Most of the time, it's dating apps. Almost exclusively, these guys are trying to fix their dating app profile and not having any success at all, or very minimal success. One or of the even questions, lying, like they like take like fake photos, and then they yeah. like, like, like edit the background and like put like a Lamborghini in the back, like it's terrible. Yeah, and it's still not working for them. And then the other big one is like the bar, and a lot of these guys have just like resigned to giving up and they're like, I need help, right? Well, then they'll say that their goal is they want to have a lifestyle like Michael Sartain, like Dan Bilzerian. They yeah. want to have a lifestyle like one of our clients. And I'm like, okay, so you only have two avenues of meeting women. Dating apps, you're not meeting anyone that you're really attracted to. Yeah. At the bars, you know, the, the most attractive woman in the room is going to be there with a group of guys usually. Like she's hard, she's hard to get access to because it's the bar, right? Like if you're a hot girl at a public venue, there's not many of them in mm -hmm. that venue. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of competition in that space. These guys are cold approaching with no success. They've had zero dates in six months oftentimes. And then I have to ask them, I'm like, okay, how long would it take you to meet a thousand beautiful women with your current methods of meeting women? And they're always like, I mean, shit, like a lifetime. Like I might never yeah. have that happen. I'm like, okay, but if you have a properly curated social media profile, 
and you make one good post that goes even semi-viral, you could have 100,000 people see it. And many of them could be beautiful women. Yeah. You could have 1,000 beautiful women see one post. Now they all recognize your face. You're showing competency. You're showing value. And so it's just like the most powerful resource that's ever been created for networking mm -hmm. and getting exposure and getting reach. And then having a proper profile where you show competency and you show that status like we teach in our program, it's like it's it's not guaranteed. It's just giving you the highest probability and that continues to grow. Yeah. And it, I mean, at the end of the day, the probability is so high that it almost is guaranteed. Like if you just keep For going sure. at it, you're going to end up meeting way more beautiful women. And the current methods that are accessible to guys like cold approach at the bar, I mean... I mean, it just makes me so sad to even like think about it because I used to be yeah. that guy too. Yeah. And like me cold too. approach, like cold approach is super fun. Like, don't get me wrong, I really enjoy it. But did I get any results from it? Like, hell yeah. no. I mean, let's just go over this. Like, you met your girlfriend at an event. Yeah, that I was it was a, my... a, a actual MOA event. Exactly. Like, I met my girl at an event that we put to, uh, together, and it wasn't like we put the event together to like get girls. We just met a whole bunch of people there, yeah. and then we ended up uh, hanging out later. We exchanged Instagrams, of course, and then she watched my story for a couple of weeks. I ended up flying out to where. She she lived and then we just hung out for a while and it, yeah. we just like totally hit it off and it was like it will literally was because of social media and events that i met her it was zero cold approach like there was no cold approach skill involved yeah. she walked up to me and talked to me i'm not mm. even kidding yeah. and so like that's the, that's the difference between cold approach and like event planning and social circle is that you have to you have to go through and you actually have to uh with social circle you have to like have to Every single day, you're starting at ground zero. Yeah. And then with Social Circle, it's this thing that compounds what we call the social mm -hmm. snowball. Yeah. And it continuously builds up more and more and more to the point where uh, you're just getting invited to mm -hmm. places automatically. And you have you can talk about this a lot, too, because I know you you spent a lot of time in the cold approach in the pickup community. And you've definitely seen like a completely different world with Social Circle. Oh, yeah. Like working with Michael, learning from him completely changed my life because like it was uh, brought much more meaning where I'm like, Combining cold approach and soul circle, cold approach for anyone out there is essentially the skill set of turning a stranger into a friend. So it's nothing crazy. It's just how do you go up to someone that you don't know, build rapport, and leave with like a meaningful relationship? And uh, yeah, with soul circle, kind of working with you uh, made my life much more enjoyable, much more meaningful. Instead of going to the bars just chase girls, I'm meeting cool guy friends, meeting cool girlfriends, being invited to all these cool events. Um, and my life is like literally 10x ever since I started learning from you. And then two points I want to say, I guess three, is one, social media kind of does all the heavy lifting for you. Mm -hmm. Like to show that I was at Dan Bazarian's place, to show that I was traveling for the last few months, to show the McLaren that I had the, the week I was here. Mm -hmm. Like I would have to spend five hours to show that I'm a high status guy to a girl. And then spending that five hours just me qualifying the entire time. So I'm actually less attractive opposed to just posting on my Instagram. I didn't, I learned the power of Instagram uh, my first year in Vegas, because you made me start an Instagram. Before that, I did not have one at all. And I remember this, this girl that I met here wanted to see my Instagram before we agreed to meeting up in person. <laughs> and I didn't have one. And she's like, what about your Facebook? And I had like two photos. Yeah, and my I friend was this. like, bro, she's gonna think you're a serial killer. <laughs> but um, yeah, I learned the power of social media when uh, there's this girl that I met in Vegas a year later shits me up and she's like, hey, are you still in Vegas? I'm like, I didn't even remember me. She's like, oh, I've been watching all your stories. I'm like, wow, like coming from a marketing perspective, social media is like nurturing leads. I'm like, not only has all my posts been nurturing the leads that I met yesterday, a week ago, a month ago in Las Vegas, it's also been nurturing all the leads that I met a year ago on the other side of the world, whether it's for relationships, business opportunities, men or whatever. Um, but yeah, when it comes to cold approach for social circle, cool, when when I used to do a bunch of calls, I would tell guys like cold approach is like a video game with no checkpoints. If you ever played those type mm. of games, where no matter how far you get, the very next day you have to start all over. No one really cares about your success from yesterday. But soul circle is like a video game with checkpoints, where you always leave off where you last play the game. And you know, living in Medellin, I come to Vegas every so often, and the soul circle I built three years ago, I still have access to. Um, even in, um, what was it? We went to Cabo for a mastermind event and then knowing what I know, met some people, invited them out to an event, built a social circle there. The second time that I went, I wasn't starting at Cabo from scratch. I was starting with the five friends I made the last time yeah. who, uh, you know, invited their friends out, met really cool people. So, I mean, even at that mastermind event in like a really micro context, like yeah. you networked into the VIP access of the mastermind 
because oh, of your yeah, social yeah. circle. Like I remember <laughs> I landed and then you're like, Hey, I'm in, I'm in VIP, like come over. And I'm like, what? Yeah, and then is... you like literally let, let me in the VIP room and it was just incredible. So if you so guys, that's... if you guys take men of action at the end of the MOA advance, the second part of the, the modules, the, one of the last homework assignments yeah. is get yourself in somewhere you're not supposed to be. Yeah. Now, nothing not illegal, to be there. You not illegal, like but like, not illegal. like <laughs> getting, like getting backstage at a Ted talk and meeting Elon Musk would be exactly what I'm saying. Or getting into VIP and getting on stage with marshmallow anything where you talk your way into a place you're not supposed to be we go to the, the mastermind you talk about with cole gordon yeah. i sleep on cole gordon's couch when yeah, i go to, right, to, right. to scottsdale that's a different type of networking that we're talking about it's like it's like beyond vip i, I just me and cole just go eat together you know what i'm yeah, saying no, whereas other people are you know paying hundreds of thousands of dollars like same thing like pbd will charge for like one-on-ones with him hundred thousand dollars and me and pbd will just talk like it's it's a very different type of networking that happens because of it but, yeah that's what i was going to say earlier where it's like social circles and no one skill set that you can use to literally accomplish any single goal there. Like I use Social Circle to get into that VIP section. You had to pay an extra 20K for. You use Social Circle to connect with PD, uh, PBD where it normally costs 100K. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're working on is IG shout outs and there happened to be a guy there who's like the best person in the whole entire world. I invited him out to an event we're gonna have in that in October and most people pay him like 50K for his mentoring and we're gonna be able, be able to get it for free. Um, no, like a yeah. guy, a guy will pay a hundred K for mentoring yeah. and I will take this guy on stage with marshmallow and he will talk my ear off the whole time. Yeah. Like it's, it's cut. This is constantly happening. You think about like, like Rolo has one-on-ones and me and Rolo talk all the time. Mm -hmm. Like anytime I want, I can pick up the phone and I can talk to Sosnick. I could talk to, to Myron Gaines. I could talk to fucking Andy. I could talk to Bulzarian. I could talk to any of these guys. Ta Ty Lopez. Like, again, if you guys wanted to learn how to run ads, how about the guy who like made yeah. hundreds right. of millions <laughs> of dollars from running Here YouTube ads? Garage. I call up, I call up Ty any <laughs> time I want we could just talk about whatever these guys are open uh, same thing with Dan Fleischman same thing with Ryan Stuman same thing with Wes Watson same thing with Brad Lee like these what well, uh, is everyone gonna get to that level no but my point is this whole idea where like there's these people like again Andy Priscilla is a great example Andy Priscilla will pay will charge certain people to go speak 100k 200k mm -hmm. but his friends he does it for free yeah. same thing with Brad yeah. Brad is like 25 50 grand to go speak for his friends he'll do it for free <clears throat> And like that's just kind of the way it works, and so you'll you'll learn from these situations that that network you want to help people in your network. Uh, well, Bulzarian, he's you know considering you know doing his own program, and I told him I was like because his one of his managers was like, why are you helping us so much? Like we really appreciate your helping us. I'm like your success is our success. Mm. You you succeeding in this field only helps us yeah. because people buy multiple courses, and us being any way aligned with you is just going to help us. And a lot yeah, of people don't understand this. Yeah, it grows exactly. the pie for everyone for sure. In fact, there's a bunch of people who aren't in self help who will get into self help yep. because Dan started a course. Exactly, yeah. but no, it's amazing to see all the results our clients being able to achieve just because going back to the soul circles literally is the number one skill set you could ever learn to accomplish your goals as fast as possible. Yeah. Like I remember that mastermind event. He was like, oh, find the leaders in your space and speak at their event. I texted that to Mike, like, hey, where are some leaders and how can we speak at their event? 20 minutes later, the number one, it was like the Myron, the Fresh and Fit. You're like, hey, we're confirmed to speak at their event. And like most people would take, like the book he recommended was like eight hours long. I have to read the book for eight hours. Then I have to scowl through, then message people. If my Instagram is not on point, they're never going to respond. Yeah. So like what would take the average person 10, 20, 40 hours to do with your social circle, you're able to do it in 20 seconds. And it's cool to see clients uh, kind of ex exemplify that in the course where whatever their goals are, clients have been able to achieve it in like resounding speed just because they learned how to network with the right people. Yeah, yeah. Just just to add on top of that, there was a guy I was talking to the other day. Yeah, he, you hung out with the Note Boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like we were first. <laughs> more so from like the, the client perspective, I had this guy asking me like, how is this going to make me money? And I got this directly from Alex Hormozzi, so I didn't come up with this, but I thought it was great. Uh, it was a great analogy. It's like, what's the opportunity cost of not knowing how to make a million dollars a year? Mm. It's a million dollars a year. How do you find out how to make a million dollars a year from somebody who makes a million dollars a year? I love that. So yeah. you need to network with people like that, or you're never going to get that information, or you need to pay for that information. What? But you can also use Instagram and social circle yeah. to just meet those people, be friends with them, and then they'll tell you for free. Okay. Yeah, like 70% of the people in our program are entrepreneurs. They're too busy. They had success and now they want to, they sacrifice their social life for the business and now they want to learn how to have that 10 out of 10 lifestyle, that social circle. So like, there's countless people in the program that make a million dollars a year, $10 million a year. I was talking to one of our clients the other day that makes $40 million a year. So it's crazy just the type of people you can surround yourself with 
like the first second you joined the program. And, and the other thing is, uh, again, going back to evolution, it took from the time that the mile was created, you know, a mile mm. is, is 1,000 paces of a Roman legion. That's about how long, how far they can walk. A mile is 5,280 feet. From the time the creation of the mile was 2,000 years ago to the first man to break mm. the four minute mile was, was 2,000 years. Okay, that's how long it took Damn. him. The first guy, his name was Roger Bannister. He was a PhD, mm -hmm. I believe, in physical fitness or something yeah. like that. The second guy to break, break the four minute mile was 43 days later. It took 2,000 years for the first benchmark <laughs> and 43 days for the second one. What, what, does that, what does that tell you? When you see that something can be done, your probability of going out and doing the thing, <laughs> right, is it, 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 it's excessive. Mm -hmm. Again, the way we sell MOA in part was, um, was, in, was uh, influenced by 67 Steps, mm -hmm. Ty Lopez for sure, the way he had folders and we would go yeah. in there and, 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 and we put stuff in the different folders and we'd have a course set up on video, et cetera, et cetera. The I group, did that course. Yeah, th yeah there you go. Same. The, the group calls, I, I'm trying to remember who I, the first time we saw the, the Zoom group calls, who we saw those from, but that, that was another thing we picked up from someone else. The way we market on social media, Cody Sanchez, uh, Brad Lee, we look at uh, Ryan Stuman, we look at Wes Watson, the way they, they continually show these these posts, and all of that kind of comes from Alex Hermosi, who was kind of one of the first ones to do that, that concept. We're stealing from other people who are more successful mm -hmm. than us. Sometimes we can meet them, sometimes we can only read their books, and sometimes we can watch them on social media, but the exposure to those people as mentors is so incredibly powerful. I look up to Bradley like he's a mentor and I ask him questions. I don't know Jocko Willick, but I also read his books and some of the mm -hmm. things he says, I take to heart and I use those. I do know Robert Kiyosaki, you know, and I take the, take to heart you know some of the these he's some of the things he says as a mentor and i don't know alex hermosi but obviously his books have mm -hmm. greatly influenced yeah. our, uh, greatly Shout out alex hermosi yeah. yeah. alex yeah. got us from yeah. zero to 100k a month it, it, seriously <laughs> if, if alex was wa watching this we went from zero to 500k a month using some of the stuff that Easy. you were talking yeah. about talking about on his one book on, yeah. uh, his first book then second book is like changed the way that we've looked at things yeah. as well i want to i want to bring up one thing real quick um, this is really interesting uh, correlation. I just thought about this. So you you have a, a regular coaching business, and let's say they have a high ticket offer, it's like ten thousand dollars, and then a low ticket offer, like a hundred dollars. The high ticket offer is you're going to get into a serious relationship with this client, and the low ticket offer is for people sometimes who aren't financially qualified. But over time, maybe they come around to the high ticket offer. Mm -hmm. You guys understand? Mm -hmm. And even though it's one percent, that's the way it works. The social circle thing with the girls is the same thing. And I did I just thought about it mm -hmm. right now, but it is mm -hmm. the same thing. The high ticket offer is my girlfriend. Her and I got into a relationship together. It's a large investment for me as far as what I do and a large investment for her as far as what she does. But all the other girls that are like, hey, this girl's really pretty, but she's married. This girl's really pretty, but she's not my type. This girl's really pretty, but you know, she's just, for whatever reason, this isn't gonna work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what's the low ticket offer? Come to Babes in Toyland. Come to the bikini competition. Come to Swimsuit USA. Come to like all these things where they're still a part in in my ecosystem, right? And eventually, some of them want to join the high ticket offer. That's the thing you find out for a while. You met your girlfriend at like so, so kind of a low investment event. Come do this photo shoot. Yeah. Hang out for a while, right? And so she's in the low ticket offer, and then after a while, she's like exposed to your social media, et cetera, et cetera. And then almost like a lead that gets into the high ticket offer. That's the way it works with social circle, and that's the way it works with sales. And there's a very si similar correlation. And the other thing that I've realized from learning from you guys and reading all these books is when you get to the highest level of networking and the highest level of sales, and the highest level of dating, it's the same. It's all the same. It's yep. all the same. Mm -hmm. The higher you get with the more high status people and the prettier girls, it ends up becoming the exact <laughs> same concepts, which again, as I've said this a million times, rule number two in MOA, anything that exists in, in homo sapiens, anything that is pervasive amongst homo sapiens must exist in evolution. All human behavior can be explained through evolutionary psychology. And so that's what, where we get that concept. Can I, can yeah, I think just, Yes. I just... I, what, something you guys also do that you're not talking about right now too is just like the responsibility of you actually leveling yourself up. It's yes. not just about putting yourself in these yeah. circles. Whereas around the world right now, it's like, oh well, you know, they grew up with this. They got they got all of this handed to them. Yeah. You guys squash that because you're like, you, it may be fucking hard for you, but we're gonna give you the tools to kind of yeah. get out of that situation. But it's your responsibility to also level up, <clears throat> so you have an answer when the millionaire goes. What do you do? Mm -hmm. You give them the tools to yeah. say, here, I have something to offer. So that way they're not left going, well, yeah. uh, 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 I just got in this club with 100 girls. I don't have anything to offer you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's a really important part of your piece, too, because a lot of people don't know how to have a real conversation with somebody that's successful when they're not Such there yet. Yeah. Yeah. And you teach them these skills because like, if they can't have that conversation, they're not going to level up. And eventually, you know, they may not be going into the clubs with a bunch of girls. What do they do next? So yeah. like, you guys teach them that. 
Um, that's, it, a good, that's a good point. Just to add to that, kind of one of my favorite speakers, Jim Rohn, he kind of talks about <clears throat> like success is not something you pursue, mm -hmm. it's something you attract. So like when you chase something, like butterflies, they elude you. What you want to do is like success is something you attract by the person you become. And that's what men of action really is all about. Yeah. How to become the most attractive version of yourself in all areas of your life. Like, yes, we lead with like social circle and dating for the marketing because it works really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> but once you get in the program, like yeah. you learn yeah. entrepreneurship, you Absolutely. learn leadership, you learn mindset, social networking, events, time management, like you literally just like everything. learn what it takes to be like the cool guy. Yeah. Like yeah. the Renaissance man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, seriously. And yeah, valuable. I think that's a great point. Like a valuable cool guy. Yeah. Not just the cool guy who's like fucking airhead when you talk to him, has nothing to bring to the table, but like the man that has some answers and can actually, you know what I said, creates value there. So so let's talk about this. You and I know a lot of people in nightlife here over the sure. last decade. Yeah. Uh, and this was a very common trope. If you guys, one of the required readings in Men of Action is a book called Very Important People by Professor mm -hmm. Ashley Mears of Boston University. She's a PhD in sociology and she went undercover as a bottle rat for two years mm -hmm. and wrote one of the most f profound books I've ever read. However, her description is 10 out of 10 perfect. Her, uh, what's it called? Her, not a, her prescription, her interpretation I thought was wrong. She, she blamed everything on misogyny and fucking... Mm -hmm. Uh, patriarchy, but like she, but it was just very ironic that she was saying these things while getting flown to Fer Paris, France for free and drinking <laughs> champagne. But it's all patriarchy. Yeah. Like it was like there was. A, but uh, I, I understood <laughs> like it, the, the book. The book feels like the book feels like her PhD thesis. But it was in order for the PhD thesis to get uh, published at Boston University, she needed to, to sprinkle in the wokeness. And then because she said, "Oh, you know," it's like she she completely loses the fact that. Um, she says this is based on racism, yet half the promoters that she was working with were black. Like, but somehow it was racism. It was like all of the women were like literally making money from this, but like it was somehow misogyny. It was crazy w w listening to the book. But I love her description. It's one of the best descriptions. Anyway, in the book, several of the club promoters, see, if, tell me if you've ever heard this before. They were or the club promoters, the VIP hosts. They would constantly be surrounded by men who were very wealthy, and they would try to connect those men who are other men who are wealthy. And they were telling all their friends that they're one or two steps away from being millionaires. Do you know anyone in nightlife who's done that a million times? I mean, I'm not gonna like. Yeah, you're not gonna name names, but you know what I'm talking yeah. about. There's a very common thing where we would see hosts and promoters here, and they would see that. When the reason why is because of what you said. They were really good at getting their foot in the door, and yeah. when they did so, they did not have the requisite expertise mm. to have the conversation with these guys. And they literally thought because I met John, who's a billionaire, partied with him, did a bunch of cocaine, and watched him fuck a bunch of hookers, and then I had partied over here with Steve, and he, we went to Ibiza and had a great time, and I introduced him to the girl that it's like now his girlfriend. He had a great time. If I introduce them, they're gonna give me a fine fee and I'm gonna be rich and it never happens they always get burned out and start selling real estate after 10 years or nfts or whatever and that's 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 essentially what happens and so that, that's again it's one of the reasons one of the funniest things I've, I've thought about is like why every single guy in promotions in the city isn't required to take my course oh, it, they I should. finally Alan Dia, <laughs> Alan Dia shout out to Alan Diaz from Texas he came up to me the other day he goes yeah, man, I'm thinking about taking your course. I'm like, how the fuck have you guys not figured this out? Did like, you when, try to partner mm -hmm. yet? Have huh? you like reached out? No, I, 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 may, I may ask Jason Strauss about this, but like Jason, like at some point, do you guys ever ask how I showed up to your club with 80 girls? Does that not, is there That's not tomorrow. the slightest bit, yeah. is there not the slightest bit of curiosity how I had 150 women show up to your bikini competition and I have no marketing budget. <laughs> you is there the slightest, you side passing yeah, right. is, is there not the slightest <laughs> bit of fucking curiosity on how I did that when I actually teach a course to teach you how to do that? I've just never understood like why. Like they could do some kind of deal with us where I come in there and teach all the guys from Talhakasan like how to do. Yeah. Here's what you do. Don't act creepy. Here's how you get around the firewall, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Girls like this, they don't like this. Um, you know, you don't, can even go teach live. I mean, you could yeah. do a series well, with them and teach live. I've just they, this is the invitation. They, they've never asked me, and I've just never understood why mm -hmm. they haven't. I'm like, again, you may not like me personally and think my views are weird, but like, are you a little curious how I showed up with 80 <laughs> girls and I'm not a club promoter? Is that not a little strange to you? But I just always, I was always wondering that that whole thing. That's uh, one of the many cool things you teach in the program is like how to have events. And uh, talking about social media, like a lot of entrepreneurs join our program because they want to have that 10 out of 10 lifestyle in all areas of life: health, wealth, love, happiness. Um, shout out Plato, I believe. Um, but yeah, like how to have events because it's like highly, highly leverageable, like and scalable as well. And one thing I learned from you is like if you want to be surrounded by high quality people, go to events where that's the average person, sure. whether it's male or female. 
So like how to have events that the average girl is yeah. like a stunner you're and the, the average if, guy is yeah. a millionaire. If you're at the Playboy Mansion, the ugliest girl there yeah. is hotter than anyone you've ever been with. If you go to elevator nights and you're backstage, the the, <clears> the worst. When I go to dinner sometimes with, with uh, Fleischman, he has these group dinners with all of his like clients and friends. I am by far the poorest person there. Like it is, every person there is wearing like a cheap t-shirt and a $400,000 watch and they all have <laughs> Bentleys and private jets. Every one of them, like what do you do? I, I sell diapers online, Amazon <laughs> FBA. What? How do you make four hundred million a month? What? What the fuck? What, dude? I was sitting there with Eric Spofford. You know, Eric, yeah, you guys yeah. Eric Spofford, the guy. He was a he was a yeah. he was a drug addict who ended up owning these uh, opening these um, mm -hmm. rehab clinics. Just tatted up. You know what I'm saying? I think he's a convicted felon, yeah. or I don't know if he, he was actually convicted. Comes out of it, and the guy sold his company for a hundred and fifteen million dollars. And you're sitting there, and it's like some watch that I can't identify, but I know is worth yeah. more than every home I've owned in my entire life. <laughs> this watch that he's got on, and then we get into his bed with the like star if you guys have been in the new Bentley's like they have those like stars on the roof yeah. you know what I'm talking about it's just like crazy when you see this and like when exactly what you said like having dinner with Dan Fleischman is worth you know yeah. he has a hundred thousand dollar mastermind you are getting a bargain if you pay mm -hmm. for his hundred thousand dollar mastermind bro he introduces you to incredibly successful and wealthy people Wes Watson making three million dollars a month with no fucking sales team 90 percent profit bro and it is and you meet Wes and you talk to him and you're like this is real this guy is is what he says it's crazy when you see it but you're exactly right your networking allows you it's like go to a party where the the ugliest girl there is prettier than anyone you've ever been with and go to dinner where yeah. every single person is 10x your fucking net worth that's what you should be we, doing we went to an event recently where steve aoki was a dj yeah so like that was like the transformation from my life where like the average weekend was going to a local bar that i didn't even enjoy Wait, are you talking are you talking about the the mansion party yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, he wasn't the DJ. He was just fucking hanging out with us. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, so no, no, I, no, I thought the, I thought the, I thought the same thing too. <laughs> yeah. No, you're talking about Pascal Mawad. Yeah, like, yeah, like the, the so yeah. Pascal Mawad is uh, he owns Mawad Jewelry, and he made a two million dollar bra yeah. uh, for uh, for Victoria's Secret, and he was displaying the two million dollar bra. He had two two million dollar bras there, and Aoki was just hanging out with us. Yeah, so he was like, just coming to hang out. That's with us. how quickly you can level up your yeah. life and the type of people you can meet. Like, who are you more likely, like which. Which event has higher quality people, your local dive bar or an event where Steve Aoki happens to be there and will DJ just yeah. for fun? Yeah. Like the type of girls that were there, like every guy, I made a point to talk to every single guy because like yeah. the girls are there because they're beautiful. The guys are here for a reason. So let me find that out. These yeah. guys work uh, for this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like every guy there was a millionaire. So like imagine the business connections I made from that one event. Did you, didn't, wasn't that the event where you met that one guy that had like access to like 80 of the hottest girls from like Victoria's Secret or some sort of modeling? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Was that same, was that that was same event? Was yeah, 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 yeah. Jatan. And, then, that guy, yeah. and then we hosted his dinner. Jatan, Jatan puts me to shame. Jatan yeah. and Sam Rima put me, whatever you think I'm doing, J Jatan and Sam Rima put me to shame. <laughs> but those guys don't teach a course. Fortunately yeah. for me, they don't teach a course. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Like, I like, because a lot of people are like, oh, Michael, you're better at this than everything. You're the new Hugh Hefner. I'm like, bro, I will teach you. I will introduce you to 50 dudes who are ahead of me. They just don't teach a course. That's the difference. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's great. Now, here's another thing I want to ask about. We have a very unique company culture. Apparently, mm. when you guys make a sale, you send a meme to each other. What is the meme? It's a picture of you from one of the live calls <laughs> going like this with your eyes rolled in. Yeah. Back so funny. Shark, can, can you describe our company culture? Oh man, I don't know if I'm part of the normal company culture sometimes, but um, I just think it's just like, it's like a bunch of dude, friends. Yeah. Friends really trying to also really be good entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, but you take your stuff serious, you know what I mean? Everybody shows up because like I said, if you don't show up then, but I think, it's, I think you're kind of like casual in nature a little yeah. bit. You allow people to make mistakes or to have ideas, but that's why you guys I think also grow pretty quickly is you, kind of foster an environment where you can have ideas. I don't mean to sound like I'm on fucking LinkedIn right now, but that's yeah. just how I talk. So like, I, I don't know, I would say the company culture is pretty relaxed, but also driven. Yeah. Relaxed in a sense of like, they give you give room for error and learning, but then driven, like you also need to make these goals or it's just not gonna cut it. Yeah. yeah, like our meetings are super fun. Like every yeah. single time I get on my meetings, they are so fun. We play <laughs> amazing rap music like every single and time. People want to be a like, part of this team. People like, want to be here. Yeah. I've been on teams where it was so stressful and you just felt anxious to even be there and you just felt beaten down. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I want to do better. Like I want to do better just being a part of the team. The team's like, you guys are great. You really care about the team members. It shows, um, it's why I'm here. And um, yeah, you know, I probably would have retired managing <laughs> at the time that counts and just done what I do. But I really liked being this part of this team and it's opened up opportunities for me. You don't even know. I have, I've gotten clients from you oh, too, 
You do know. Yeah. And then I brag um, about you on my show all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank he does, you. He does. And uh, and I appreciate that. And then I also have some clients who've never met you, and they still mention me. Oh, I know you've worked with Michael. Like, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of Michael, and it's like people you wouldn't expect. Yeah, like, that's it, always crazy. I they love it. They don't want people to know that they're fans I'm of a me. Fan of that's, Michael. that's where I'm at now. I don't, shh, don't tell anybody. I watch Michael Sartain <laughs> shit. Shh, don't tell anyone. Like, guys, come on, man. I do podcasts on evolutionary psychology and fucking physics. Like, it's not all red pill stuff. Uh, going going uh, back to what you said before, um, uh, the company culture. Can you talk about um, you know, some of the things that you enjoy the most? One of the things that I really enjoy the most is... We, when we first started the company, we set out what our core values were. Yeah. And those core values were what had made us like successful up till that point. And also like what we envisioned embodied like a good man or a good woman. Yeah. Um, like you and in, in, you embody these traits of our core values, such as like positivity, brutal honesty, m being okay with making mistakes. Yeah. Um, it, you embody these, like you just inevitably become this very successful person. And I love that our company culture, there's zero negativity in it. When we see negativity, like we immediately call that person out on it. We give yeah. them a phone call, like, hey, what's going on? Or if they're just like complaining on a meeting, we're like, hey, knock that off. Like, no, like there's no negativity um, brought into the company culture. Yeah. And we just took everybody to Paradise Challenge last week or two weeks ago. And that was incredibly fun. Like we work in a remote company, but we do still uh, play very hard when we yeah. get all together. And we're there with like, what, 50, 60 models. And we're having just a fantastic time. Um, and everybody's having like... It, Honestly, like the company is the, the company culture is the people that I wish I had when I was in high school. Like yeah. it's the, it's the mm. friend group that I wish that I had, um, because everybody is so cool and they just get their shit done. It's like, I want to be like my friends. I want to only be around people that share the same goal and that are driving to the same place. Like, like the people that I spend the most time with, I want to be around and every single person on the team shares those goals we all share that same vision and we're all rowing the boat in the same mm -hmm. direction so like that's part of like if you look at the graph like our growth is exponential it's it's literally insane we're about to quadruple every single year and it, part of the reason is just the eight players that we get onto the team because we have a lot of fun but we work super hard and everybody makes a bunch of cash and specifically on the sales team like it's just you know it's an amazing culture and, and you know you're the manager of the closers like i see you making over that face over there like we yeah. just have a shit ton of fun yeah. the chat is just hilarious dude i like i love our slack channel and what happens when uh, we have a really funny uh, sales call oh my god <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the group. yeah, we take we, we take a recording and we send it everywhere. We, we have a file of all the amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. We cannot we talk about any folder. of this. Yeah. We cannot talk we about put any it in the folder the of all the clips. <laughs> the specifics of what goes on. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a part of it. The other thing is, um, it, we also, it's okay for us to be wrong. And I think mm -hmm. that's one thing that's happened before where we've had, uh, you and I have had discussions, you and I have had discussions about like, how far do we want to go into uh, you know, red pill content, how far, like what is, how soon do we want to do a low ticket offer? How soon what you know, you, like you said before, these guys have all made inferences on how our network can grow your net worth, but we can't market it as a business course because then we're going to end up with a bunch of guys who are frustrated because they came in there like, I thought I was going to be guaranteed a hundred thousand dollars a month and you're teaching me how to meet women. You're like, so we, there's like all these discussions that we have and we're very open to it. And it's funny because I try to have these same discussions with people who don't work for my company and they sometimes they'll get offended. Like, bro, you just told me that already. And I'm like, that's not how it works in the company. In the company, it's like, you keep saying things because we understand the company comes first. Mm. So I, whenever you two tell me something like, it, it, if like, let's say initially I get a text message and I may feel attacked, I immediately am like, no, this is whatever we're doing is it's so the company, it, the company comes first. And so that's one of the things we had the discussion uh, about like, what, am, what are we going to do for my birthday tomorrow? And there was like a theme and I'm like, whatever we do on the, the theme and I, the, the company has to come first. It can't be too embarrassing. <laughs> right. So, I mean, we, like, I think the open levels of communication, that's something you talked about. Like at previous companies that you've worked for have mm. not had that open level of communication. Yeah. I mean, I I think every man goes through a certain point in life where he has like a shitty job and a shitty boss. Yeah. Um, and there's especially bad sales cultures out there at some companies uh, where every person on the team is afraid to give their ideas. Mm. Every person is afraid to get chopped for no reason. You know, even if you're performing at a high level, like, you know, your boss just doesn't like you or something. And that's what happened to me right before I joined Men of Action, actually. Um, and I was the top performing rep and just got cut for giving feedback. And to come to a team like this and see a place where not only is my feedback, you know, asked for constantly, like, hey, I want feedback. Like when I do one on ones with these guys, they'll they'll basically demand that yeah. I give them feedback. Like I'm like, I'm not really sure, like if I have feedback or I, 
And now it's like I never hesitate because I know that they're going to take it. Yeah. They're going to interpret it. They're going to implement it if they feel like it's a good idea to test. And in our culture, it's it's like that with everybody. And to touch on the negativity thing, you know, a lot of a lot of sales teams, especially because obviously I work with the sales team almost primarily. It's you have a fake culture and then behind the scenes mm. everybody is talking shit on the boss or everybody's talking shit about the leads everybody's talking shit in some way shape or form on our team the culture is pervasive throughout all interactions and so the the communication and the culture that's been built here is just absolutely unbelievable like i look at the sales team and all you guys like my, my family now like some of my best friends and like grant said it's like the the friend group i always wish i had and so you know when, when I have my, my closers chat with, with all the closers at the end of the day, we hop on a FaceTime, it's, it's the same exact thing. Like if anyone brings negativity to the table, we stomp it out. We're helping each other out. We're asking each other questions on how to improve. We're all giving each other feedback. And we have a shit ton of fun too. Yeah, it's like, so fun. It's, it's, a, it's like a, it's a nice balance of professionalism <laughs> with like just raunchy, you know, not clean at all humor. And it's my favorite place I've ever worked. And as far as the communication goes, I mean, it's open from top to bottom. Like from the very first day, I was like, when I first joined the team as a setter, I was kind of afraid to hit you up. Yeah. And like Tristan used to hit me up and be like, and Tristan's one of the guys on our team. And um, he used to be like, yo, you need to talk to Michael more. Because mm -hmm. like I would ask Tristan questions because yeah. I knew he was close with you. And he'd be like, dude, just hit up Michael directly. And I remember the first time I called you, you were like, yeah, what do you need? And I like, I like poured out my heart to you for like 30 minutes because I was dealing with something yeah. and I was afraid to like bring it up. But you gave me some advice, I implemented it. And then I was like, there's, there's no shot that I have access to the founder of the company. Isn't like, it, this is crazy isn't it funny, the, the guys, will, the clients will come on too. We sell a package with unlimited access to, to do unlimited one-on-ones with me. And the clients literally will be like, that's not true. There's no way that's real. Yeah, and then they'll know, do they it. They'll do it after it. a while. Like, yeah, no, well, it's like, well, we only have four minutes left on the call. It's like, no, I'll just go all day. I don't give a shit. Just keep, what, what is, what's the next question? Yeah, I know for sure. Because I, I just can't, my old, something Alex Ramosi said was great. Only 1% of the people are going to buy. But the other 99% can ruin your fucking company. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way I look at it with every single person mm -hmm. I do one-on-one -on -one with or people who like, when they ask me questions on the free calls we do on Monday, I look at it just like that. Any one of them could ruin our company. Yeah. So as far as the access, yeah, you're like, like it's one of the things I wanted to give is, uh, you know, I'll have I'll often have sales guys hit me up and they'll ask me personal questions about whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all the resources that are in N MOA are accessible to the people who work for MOA, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of them. And so that, that's something that we definitely try to do. Like you they sometimes access you, all the events as well, access to all the Mexico events or, all together, or the people like paid for. We have a client right now who's writing an AI chat bot. Uh, for, he, he wants to do it for OnlyFans creators and uh, he wants to do it for CJ Spark. So he wrote it, it took, he did 80 hours and I just sent it to CJ right now. Like we, you have acts. If you're part of this organization, mm -hmm. you get access to all the resources that we have in the organization. And that's something I definitely wanted. Uh, I definitely wanted to have. And like I said, man, when we have disagreements, like you said, we, we the constructive criticism is always helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, um, crucial con conflict or crucial conversations is an important book for us. There's always, I never try to pin somebody up against the wall, always try to give them a way out. And I always accept feedback. And when I do the sales calls with you guys, the first thing I ask you is what worked this week and mm -hmm. what did I do that didn't mm -hmm. work? Tristan brought up to me that one day he was like, talk, cause I talk about how awesome Vegas is. He's like, you're creating an objection because Vegas is so awesome. Guys are gonna be like, well, I don't live in Vegas, so this isn't going to work for me. So one of the things I started doing was like going through the guys who don't live in Vegas or don't live in a really nice city. And I'm like, what, how is it that they're able to do it? And so the thing that We've we've kind of you know I don't remember do you guys remember James Hahn the agri yeah, PhD yeah. in agriculture yeah, yeah. so in like oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's in Buffett, Omaha right? he's in Omaha yeah, yeah. Nebraska uh, like James he lives near uh, Warren Buffett I remember yeah, that yeah. so this is, a, this is a great example James lived in a city that didn't have a scene so James made a mm -hmm, scene mm -hmm. and so that's what we teach guys or like if you're in a place like if you're in you know Dusseldorf Germany or or you know Wichita Kansas if there is no scene then you create a scene and you know what's great about that you have no competition. All of the things that we teach in this course work for you, even if you don't live in Las Vegas. And it was something I had to look at because I got that feedback from Tristan. And it so, works no matter what your background is. Yeah. Like he's Asian, they're very humble, nice, like yeah. you to themselves. Extremely smart, like yeah. Yeah. very, very smart dude. Yeah, a lot of so our clients like, are. Yeah, some people think they are. have to be extroverted, but with social media, your social circle, your female friends, they kind of do all the heavy lifting for you. So he was able to create a scene in Omaha where there's not too many people, but yeah. now he's like the epicenter. So if you're in a small city, it's almost easier to implement what we teach. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you guys uh, something real quick. What are the mistakes that we saw in other companies 
that we've implemented in our company oh. so we don't make those same mistakes. Payroll's coming up, so I'll say paying people on <laughs> yeah. time and the full amount. Yes. Uh, I've worked other jobs before where well, I was being paid 80% of what I was owed and the, just kept stacking on. And eventually I left after I was owed a couple couple tens of thousand dollars, just cut my losses. So that's one, one of the things <laughs> yeah. that we learned. I think looking at other companies and the mistakes that they made, I think... Um, they follow like a uh, they follow like this cookie cutter path of where it's like like people think that it's n like super easy to like build an online coaching program and like you objectively look at it and you're like oh yeah it's really simple like you just like you know build a website funnel with click funnels and then you like put up a course with like some videos that you filmed on loom and it's like like objectively you look at it and you're like man that's really simple and it's totally not and so people like a lot of the mistakes that i look at other companies and particularly in our space is they follow this like cookie cutter approach which is the exact opposite of what we did like we focused first thing on how much can how can we give so much freaking value that like literally the, the modules came last there wasn't even modules when we started yeah. the program yeah. like it was literally like hour long calls like live calls almost every day with you and clients there was like four a week or something like that yeah, yeah. and you would go three hours every single day during the middle of covid like, we did seven one time yeah we did yeah. seven hours yeah. yeah it was i mean we just gave so much value in the beginning that we didn't start with like oh let's make a bajillion dollars about this it was like oh my god like so many people need help with this like let's let's like get this out there and and just make a better life for people. And I look at other companies and they start from this place of profit, which mm -hmm. is fine. Like, cause you're a business owner and an entrepreneur, like you need like profit is your oxygen. Um, but like when you, when, when that's your sole focus, once you get to a certain level of the business, like you're just going to stop moving forward. Like you're like, Oh, like our goal was like 40 K, yeah. you know, a month. And our first we month, like yeah. immediately surpassed that yeah. because there was such a demand for, for men of action. And if we would have stopped there, like we would have stopped helping so many people, like, like hundreds, like 100 to 200 people every single month we change their life and that's fantastic and we never could have got there if we had like if we were mm -hmm. just motivated by money and that's what i see in a lot of companies right now and they're and they're just there for the money they're not there for the people and that's what i love about us is like the money is like secondary for us or even tertiary like we are solely focused on bringing the best results to people and it shows from the sales team like you literally like i'm gonna call you out a little bit but like you literally just like cried on a two-hour call with somebody mm -hmm. because they were in so much pain that you were like dude i'm gonna help you no matter what and if you were motivated by the money like you just wouldn't have got there you would have you would have like ended the call you would have got hopped onto your other one but like you instead <clears throat> felt so much emotion for this guy not like getting the results that he deserved that you stayed on l super long cried with him and ended up getting him in the program and he's like super happy yeah that now. happens like three times a week yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. not like so, just yesterday so, so i'm saving guys out here yeah, yeah. So, so just so you guys know in the field that we're in a lot of times we're dealing with men over the age of 35 who are divorced which is the number one cohort on the planet for taking your own life and this is yep. a concept that the sa our sale, it's really, it goes to a really dark place. He's come over to my, uh, we live next door to each other. He'll come over and I can see that he's, you know, exhausted, emotionally exhausted because he's having to deal with this situation where it's like you, the hopelessness that they're bringing to you. And then we bring him into the program. It's one of the most, uh, one of the most gratifying parts of this mm -hmm. job is that we do deal with a lot of men who are having thoughts that like that and they come through our program and, and we take them from despair to the happiest parts of their life and they look back and they wonder why they were ever unhappy in the first place. And that's that's incredibly gratifying, um, gratifying thing that we're able to do in this company. The other thing I want to bring up was a, a company culture. The first one, like you said, mm -hmm. is correct. We don't take anyone's commissions. If we offer you a commission, you get that commission 100% of the time and you get paid 100% of the time on time every time. Mm -hmm. uh, that, th those were the first two rules we had because for those of you who have been in this industry for a while, you will find out very quickly is that when all, all of a sudden the commissions are their money, they think it's it's when it's in their bank bank account, then the owner thinks it's, it's his money and he pays you when he feels like it. We don't do that in this company. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, the, problem. the first last. thing that I was saying. Yeah. Like, like the owners were so motivated yeah. in our previous like places that they were so motivated by cash that they didn't even play their employee yeah. they didn't pay us yeah. and like one of like when we hire people like one of the hardest conversations that we have is like how can we give them the most money yeah. you know like how can we like we talk about this all yeah. the time when we bring on somebody new is like we want people to succeed so much that it hurts to not pay out commissions yeah, you we, know you know when they when they work hard for it um and you know they didn't hit kpi or something like that and it like it like literally is painful because i want these people to succeed so much um, and I, that, like the love that we have on the team for like everybody that's there top down for the clients, for the, uh, the team members, like everybody, 
it's just so much love all around. And that's just like, it's one of my favorite parts of the company um, that I just like, I don't, I don't know if it's replicatable anywhere else. Just like the amount of love that goes just permeates everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a specific thing I want to bring up and I don't know if we should cut this out or not, but we had a like a glitch in the system one time where you guys paid out like extra commission to everybody. And I feel like most owners would be like, yo, give me that back. Or like, I'm going to take that out of your next check or something like that. And you guys were like, it's nah, just a keep bonus. It. Yeah. Keep it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bonus, bonus for everybody. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's not profit first for us. It's just yeah. not, we're not, none of us are money motivated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're not going to build a great company if you're only money motivated. You got to find a different purpose and a different passion. And like, that's, that's literally what I'm motivated by is just building a great company and, you know, making great products and making transformation in people's lives. The yeah. other th the other thing that is different from us is that the cost of us producing a product is zero because I will work my ass off and you don't pay me any extra for me building another product for you guys. The cost of my studio where I filmed the product was $800 and we did $6 million in revenue off that first product we did. A lot of people listening to this right now, you've already spent $80,000 on your first you know, filming your first modules or whatever, we did it for eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We built a product that did six million dollars. That was another thing where, when you start talking about mistakes that other people make, is this belief that everything has to be in four K at sixty frames a second. Per by the way, four K at sixty frames a second is easy to do because you can do it on iPhone now. But ten years ago, that's what guys were trying to do. They needed everything to be edited like a perfect Casey Neistat, twelve minutes mm -hmm. of perfection. And then we just came to the realization it was like, no, let's just make, create as much content as we can. There's so many places where we don't go out and put out expenditures when they're not necessary. We are legitimately bootstrapping. Again, the first two sales guys in MOA were you two guys yeah. right. before you guys <laughs> right. moved to your own positions. The guys writing the code for the funnel was you. Well, the guys, still me mostly. The guy paying the taxes <laughs> is you. Like that's the, the, the same thing. And I do my own fulfillment. Like I do the fulfillment. I, 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 I'm not that I don't have a secondary guy emceeing my calls and managing the fucking zoom. I am managing the zoom while I'm doing, while I'm doing the calls for, you know, nine hours a week. Mm. And so that's essentially, you know, the, the way that whole thing worked. Uh, were there any mistakes that you've seen in other companies? I don't know if I'd call it a mistake. It's sort of just like, I see a lot of personal brands, entrepreneurs, they'll go on stage and they'll talk about everything I did, everything I did to build my social media, everything I did to do the sales, everything I did. And then there's, it's not that there's anything wrong with that, but who's the team behind? I'm always curious about the team behind it mm. because I know it wasn't that person. Oftentimes they're the one funding the project or they're the face of the project. But you guys have been like, I get to know, it's like, oh, okay, Grant, Miguel, I, we see, we meet Tyler. Like you're not afraid to mention people's names. Yeah. Neither of you um, are either. And then what it does is that builds that person up and their confidence in the company. They're like, oh, they value me as a movie shout, part. Shout out to Kareem in Mexico City. Shout out to Joe like, in Mosul, Iraq. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Shout out yeah. to our guy, his name in Nepal, who's doing the, the follower Rashad. rover. Rashad, yeah. yeah. Shout out to all those guys yeah. who sit there and, and grind through our, our videos. Shout out to yeah. Dennis in Germany. Yeah. Is he in yeah. Germany? He is, is that, in Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, he those guys. Moved, but yeah. For sure, yeah. And I tell them too, like I ask him on the meetings as well, like go, what can we do better? Yeah. And then they give me great ideas, but you guys allow a space for that. And it's so, I don't know if you understand how rare that is because mm. a lot of times people are like, well, don't let them know who the team member is. What if they make so much money or they become successful that they don't want to be a part of the team? And I'm like, no, you're allowing people to grow to a certain point. They still want to be a part of the team because you were, you helped that, you know? Yeah. Like, I literally want like people, like, I definitely know that people like that work here at Men of Action it's not going to be like a 40 year thing for them, you know, and I don't necessarily want that for people. Like I want them to look at men of action as the turning point in their life, sure. like either as a, a client or a team member, when they look at it as like, man, I joined that team. And I was like, I was kind of like, you know, at this low level, I was like a B player. And then I became this, just this stud that just crushes it in so many things. And then they leveled up and leveled up and leveled up. And that's what I really enjoy seeing. There's a mm -hmm. couple of people that don't work with us anymore. And I still see their Instagrams and their social media and they have climbed so far. And I, I just want them to say that men of action was that turning point. It's like, it's kind of like with a girl, when you break up with her, like if you're, if you're dating this girl, like she starts at a place and she ends at a place like you want the, the goal of that relationship of the end of it is to make her better than when you first met her. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I see with all of our team members and our clients included is like, I want them to be better in some regard and toward and more towards their growth than they had in the beginning. Yeah. Better and not burned. And a lot of people leave mm. feeling burned and feeling like they weren't recognized as a 
move, you know, moving part to the growth of a company. So I, I just think it's really cool that you guys do that because like I said, it's very rare. Yeah. There's no passive aggressive conversations <clears throat> either. Like neither we, when we have, when we have concerns about an employee that we, you know, may have to you know look, look at his performance and possibly, you know, hopefully not let him go. Uh, when we do that, they've never let, been let go and not know why they were let go yeah. and did not know three months ahead of time yeah. what the issue was. There is no passive. We do not have conversations about employees that we would not have with them to their face. Sure. That's something that we do that's very important in this in this culture. Uh, and like I said, like everyone in the company, if they wanted to co contact me and ask me any questions, they, they absolutely can. Man, me and Gashard have funny calls together. Nice. He's our, our, our onboarding coach. Mm -hmm. You know, any guy on the sales team, I sit there and try to have conversations with them. And I, you know, I want them to all level up because the Prop, the, the other issue is uh, unique with our sales team is that our sales team are testimonials to the product. Sure. Mm -hmm. They have to be, right? They have to live MOA while doing MOA. The other, the, the last thing is you said, well, not for 40 years. I think this will last for 40 years because the, the comp, the things that we do are pervasive and will have been around for thousands of years and still will be around. So because the concept of networking and the concept of like uh, higher sexual selection are concepts in uh, evolutionary psychology and human evolution that like that I just think we'll be able to do this forever. We took a company from here and 10 x it, and then we have guys who are here and now they're dating their dream girl. And we have a guy who's here and he's got this dream job and a guy who's here and now he goes to parties with hundreds of women and meets anybody he wants in his social circle. Those things will never get old. Those, you know, no matter what happens with AI or whatever, mm -hmm. the, this con these concepts will be pervasive for a hundred years. That's not, a, that's that, a, not that the company won't last yeah. for 40 years, but like, uh, the oh, company's gonna, tenor, the company's gonna last for a long time. Like yeah. I, I'm talking about one specific person staying at the company yeah. for 40 years. Yeah. Um. You know, I want them to grow in, into the position think, that they're best. I think for. I think they'll make too much money and end up leaving us. I think that's what. <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> Retire. Be honest with you. And then uh, one thing I want to add, I think maybe you touched on it, is like everyone's opinions is valued, so everyone feels like a valued member of the team, and uh, I think that's part of the reason we've been able to grow and succeed the way we have is just it doesn't matter where the idea came from. It could be either from the C-suite level. Or from the the guy who does support just five hours a week, whatever whoever has the best idea kind of rises to the top, and we've always been able to implement that. And then, like you said, the team isn't afraid to share feedback because they know it's celebrated. Yeah, and it's not even just that. It's like it's not just a philosophy for us. It like it, everybody's opinion is valuable. Yeah, like it's not like we just say that. Like if you don't know the setters on the front lines and what they're seeing and not getting their yeah. feedback. And I mean, that's the first question that Michael asks every time he does the meeting with the sales team is like, hey, what are the setters seeing? Okay, what are the closers seeing? What are these guys telling you? Like, how can I, you know, talk more about stuff that's relevant to our, to our clients so that we have more, you know, valuable conversations with them? And it actually is valuable feedback. It's not just, you know, it's not talk. Yeah, and no one's opinion gets hurt. Like, if we come up with an idea and it's wrong, then we want to we wanna know that. If we come up with an idea and it's right, we mm -hmm. want to know that. Always looking for ways to improve. Um, there was one more point I want to add. I forget now, but now I'll remember it here. While in you a think second. about it, yeah. like just an example, yesterday Tristan noticed something on a call, brought it up today, and we immediately started implementing it. It's like yeah. that's how fast we iterate as a team because everybody's feel safe to give that feedback yeah. and that it will actually be implemented. It's not like you guys are just paying lip service, like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. And then nothing happens like so many other companies out there. Like, uh, no, like you guys will actually test into, like, stuff. Notion project, let's assign it to people, like let's get it done. Yeah, yeah we for get sure. it done, we set a deadline and then we implement it right away, it's awesome. Um, so I wanna ask you guys, each one of you two questions and these are the things that we did well that were unique to uh, like between us and say other companies. And then the things we should have done better, or we doing them now, and we maybe should have done the, done them sooner. Is there anything that you think yeah, about things do that we well do well in a circle? Yeah. What do you think? The better, um, dude. Yeah. Two things came to mind. So the first thing that uh, that we did really well. What was the second part? Uh, the, and the things that maybe that we didn't do well, and then maybe we improved, oh, that, and we could have done. We could have fixed it better. sooner. Okay. So the first thing that comes that comes to mind is um, we, or particularly myself, custom coded our funnel. And there was there would be so many people that are like yelling at me that are watching this that are like why would you ever do that that's so stupid just use ClickFunnels yada yada, and I looked at all the softwares that were required to build like a, an, an integrated system for the CRM for managing all these leads. I mean because we get thousands of leads. There's such a demand for Men of Action right now. We hardly run any ads. Like our ad spend is like less than 10k a month. Like it's incredible. And so um, dealing looking at all these softwares that people were using, it was so. I was like, wow. And then you have to go into Zapier and Zapier fucking sucks. Like I hate that goddamn application. And you can use other integration platforms and it just is like, it's just like, it's such a tedious task. And I've been doing it for years with other companies and my own, my own companies as well. 
And I was like, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to custom code this. Cause I'm a programmer. I love coding. It's like my biggest, uh, like I'll never talk about it, but like, I just love to code. It's my favorite thing ever. Uh, just getting in there and solving a project line by line. It's so fun. And that was, in my opinion, one of the things that made us extremely successful because we don't need Hyros. Like Hyros is this thing that's going to cost you 50 to $70,000 uh, every year, depending on the tier that you're at. And it was like, I was like, dude, oh my God, that's going to be incredibly expensive. And I literally just built what Hyros does and it's better. It's more integrated and it's like not that complicated. It's like a really simple thing to do. Plus like like the egregious amount of tracking that's on our website that helps us just make so, such better marketing funnels. The amount of data that I give you guys is, is tremendous. Like starting from a place of custom coding, not using Zapier as our integrations, not using make.com or anything like that for our integrations. Like it's all like every single like all, there's all these web hooks that come to our, our, our server. And then <laughs> uh, Tristan also mentioned something yesterday or uh, a while back where he was like, our Slack, uh, our Slack channels are more complicated than other people's websites. And like we have the, the just incredible features where you like click a button, so much automation happens and it makes the sales team like extremely efficient. Like our calendars are extremely efficient because of the stuff that uh, we were able to build on the tech team. And so that's one of the things I'm most proud of. And I think that a lot of companies um, uh, miss is that like, there's this gap between like zero to zero to a million companies. They all use click funnels, uh, companies that are 100 million plus or 10, even 10 million plus 50 million plus all custom build their websites because they understand the value that it provides and what you can do with it and the amount of money that you can save. So that was one of the biggest things for, uh, from, uh, I think, um, and then one thing that we could do, um, that I wish I could go back and do differently is buy back more of my time because I was such a savage where I was like, I was like this, like person that needed to do everything and to learn everything because i'm just like such a skill whore and a knowledge whore that i'll read just like i'll mercil mercilessly read books and content just because i wanted to learn absolutely <laughs> everything i wish that i would have read the book buy back your time by dan martell earlier because i would have realized that i could have grown the company a lot more than um just doing everything myself i was doing the mm. sales calls i was doing the programming yeah. i was designing the marketing i was like i was literally like writing the copy for the ads i wrote the copy for the video i filmed the video i edited the video like men of action the initial uh, start of it was built on a makeup desk every single thing on the website either was edited written designed coded by myself and that was just like like I would have still done the code, but I wish I could have like outsourced the video editor. I wish I could have like outsourced um, some of the copy that's on the web page. Even though I, I'm really proud of what what I've done, um, I wish I would have bought back my, bought, back my, bought back my time a lot sooner because we would just be so much farther along than where we're at right now. And our growth has still been like quadruple every single year, so it's still really impressive. But those would be the two things: like custom coding your website. Like people don't understand how valuable that is because they don't know how to program. Definitely the most useful skill you can use. There's there's four areas of leverage and, and leverage is like the most important thing that you can do. It's content, capital, code, and then uh, collaboration or community. And um, we at Men of Action have such great content and such great code. And that I think is what has been able to help us leverage and scale by four, uh, four X every single why, year. Why don't you license that? The, the software that we have? Yeah. Um, I've thought about it. I've had a lot of people reach out to me about like, Hey, could you do this for our thing? Could you do this for our thing? And I don't necessarily like want to build like a website and a backend server for people. Um, I'd rather build like this integrated service where it's like, well then buy back your time, find someone else to do that and then sell the code and then just sell it to our leads. Yeah. I mean, we could totally do that. I mean, the system is so robust in design that it could absolutely handle any other funnel. Um, it's not, it's not specifically coded for us, but um, yeah, definitely something I've thought a lot about because there's such a there's such a, a gap where these zero to one million companies like literally just use ClickFunnels and they're like, oh, I can just put up a website so simply. It's like not hard at all. But then they have to do so many integrations and they have to like this one thing that needs to work and they need to do this like and you got Zapier headaches and Zapier just sucks and then you got to go to Make and that still sucks. And it's just like such a headache. Like you're shooting yourself in the foot if you don't know how to code today. Yeah, if we, um, if we do a business product, you should sell that as part of the license. Cool. Yeah, well, so definitely, definitely. For any it. coaches out there, Yes. Yeah. Next thing in the pipeline is helping you get to seven figures yourself as <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah. All right. So I'll plug that real quick. <laughs> real quick. Uh, here we go. Things we did well and then things we should have done better or should have done sooner. Miguel. Um, yeah. So I think one of the things we did well, because a lot of people ask, how do we go from zero to like 500K a month in such a short time period? Because most businesses fail within the first year. Most businesses fail within the first year. You know, in the first year, we made over a million dollars and then. You know, in 10 within, months. Yeah, Zero yeah. to a million in 10 months. Yeah, exactly. Well, in that time period, like, what, 90% of businesses fail. So I think uh, one of them was the idea of Kaizen, 1% improvement. So we're always looking for ways to improve. Tomorrow, we actually have a meeting 
on how do we improve the product and we've made six million dollars so far so a lot of people don't fix what's not broken but we're always looking to improve it so kaizen the idea of one percent improvement continual improvement if you read the book atomic habits i think he quotes like the coach of the was it the english bike tour team where they went from one of the worst teams ever to just making one percent improvements in all areas how to make the tires one percent lighter how to make the bike one percent lighter how to get one percent better sleep what pillow to use um, they painted the bike white so they could see dirt and wipe that off and they went from one of the worst teams to winning like the Tour de fans like three to four years in a row so i think that's uh when people ask how do we go from zero to six million dollars in less than two years that's a big part of it just continual improvement in every facet of the company and part of that kind of what we're going to touch on earlier and what i forgot is like no one's afraid to share feedback because they know we're going to implement it they know they're celebrated actually you're rewarded if you know something that can be improved and you don't say it that's when you're kind of in trouble yeah um, yeah, yeah. yeah you're yeah. if you do that i'm yeah. pissed, I'm pissed if you're not like, why the hell have you told me this yeah. Three months? Yeah. I, will literally, I will literally call you and be super pissed about why you didn't share your idea yeah so just the feedback luke and uh just wanting feedback from every facet of the company every member of the company uh, you know, asking the setters, where are they seeing? What can we improve? Asking the closing team, what can be improved? Asking the customer success managers, what can be improved? Because they're on the front line. So a lot of, you know, C-suite executives might be in their ivory tower thinking they know best. But uh, I don't know everything. You guys don't know everything. So we kind of piggyback off the knowledge that everyone's accumulated. Um, so it's not just, it's like a Napoleon Hill, the second principle in Think Grow Rich is a mastermind principle. Um, so I think we kind of have that within the whole entire company. It's like a huge mastermind now we have 40 people so it used to be just the three of us masterminding on the company now it's 40 people masterminding on the company so it's definitely shown the growth um and another thing will just be actually i'll say the four can improve it better um and the third i think one of the biggest things is just kind of focusing on the client focusing on service none of us got into this to make money which i think ironically is why we made a good living with this is like we all just love what we do i was doing this for free for like Five six years before I, was doing I made this, a single I was doing dollar. This free for fourteen years before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was, doing I was it for negative. Free as well. I, was, I was losing money. I was doing it. Yeah. Actually, that's how he started. It. Like you, that's the power of social circle. You paid to do a private mentoring. A lot with of Michael. money. Similar story to you, Tyler. Like I paid every yeah. single dollar that I had to learn this from Mike and I and uh, moved to Vegas like every single dollar that and, I had. And I helped him so much with Call of Duty too. That was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Borderlands too, man. I mean, God, we played the shit out of that video game. We played so much Call of Duty. Warzone, dude, Warzone had just come out. We yeah. played so much fun. Yeah, Warzone. Said, like, yeah, Grant, used, Grant fun. used to live on my couch. Yeah, that was a, those were good yeah, times. Yeah, literally, literally the couch was my bed. Like that's yeah. that's how much money I that paid was, yeah. to Michael. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those were some good times, man. Those no, were some good times. And then the, the third thing I think that we did Extremely, extremely well, and you kind of touched on it. Uh, was yeah, none of us is for money. Um, there's a good quote by Zig Ziglar that you'll get whatever you want if you help enough people get what they want. And I think that's kind of what Men of Action is all about. Like I, at that mastermind event, I was talking everyone's ear off on like social circle being like the number one skill set you can learn, just because it's transformed my life, and I want that for every single person. That I me, mean, I teach my little sister Soul Circle. I teach my dad Soul Circle. Oh, yeah. Um, my dad's actually starting a new company from his Soul Circle. He met this guy Ben, who's like a millionaire. Um, long story short, he wants to connect with my dad. Uh, but yeah, so it just helps anyone and everyone, and um, just that service first mindset of wanting to transform as many lives as possible. Because as you mentioned, if you get into it for the money and you reach that goal, then you kind of stop. And that's one of the things we preach to the sales team is. One, we focus on the process, because if you focus on a goal, then you kind of stop once you achieve there, once you achieve it. If you focus on the process, then it becomes a lifestyle. Um, so we just created a lifestyle of always wanting to do what's best for the client. And that's one of the things I love about Michael that I would say on the call all the time is like, Mike was already a millionaire when we did launch the program. So he didn't launch the program to make more money. He literally did it just to save people. He spent 20 years in this area of life mainly did it just to help thousands of other guys learn what took them 20 years in just three months. Um, the Mo Advanced program that we have, we had a cohort of people go through the first program. We asked every single person, what did you like? What could be improved? We made a second program with all those improvements, and now we include it in the first program for free when most businesses would have had you pay additional like for a that tiered, tiered yeah, yeah exactly coaching yeah i just can't stand yeah that. and then uh one of the, one of the things i liked about michael as well when we first started was one of the rules during the zoom call was 
it does not stop until there's no more questions. So I'm like, oh man, he's a self-made millionaire. You know, time is more valuable than money once you have money. And just the fact that that was one of the rules when we first started the program and still is, you know, two to three years later, is like the calls don't stop until there's no more questions. And as you mentioned earlier, we had calls that were like eight to nine hours long. Yeah. Into the yeah. middle of the night. Dude. Yeah, it was yeah. Like 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we actually had a client go to work, come back, and oh, the call yeah, was that's still right. going. We were still on. <laughs> God, I forgot about that. Oh, my God. So I think yeah. that's one of the things we did extremely well is like we didn't get into the money. We got in this because we were truly passionate about helping people transform their lives and become the best version of themselves. And then one of the things I think we could have done a little bit sooner um, – and you know that's one of the benefits of mentoring programs is there's a good quote by Warren Buffett because I used to work for him. Yes, there. Yes, you have to learn from mistakes, but no one said they had to be your own. Yeah, you learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, so I think uh, we've leveled up every time we invested in ourselves. Alex Ramosi talks about the S and P me. Um, so that's one of the things we probably could have done sooner because we bought. You know, we started from scratch, knowing just what we know. We went from zero to forty k. Then we invested one mentoring program. Then we went from 40K to like 100K. Invested in another mentoring program. Went from 100K to quarter million. Invested in another mentoring program. Like one of the programs we're in is like almost $100,000 a year. And that one helped us go to half a million dollars. So that's probably one of the things um, wish we could have done sooner is like kind of buy back your time. Like <coughs> instead of us accumulating the knowledge on our own of how to build a seven figure business, pay someone who's already, and you quoted that earlier with Alex Shermozzi, um, <laughs> just pay someone who is where you're at, who is where you want to be, so you can get there a lot faster. Yeah, when you think about all these guys, when I talk, uh, Ty Lopez spends a couple hundred thousand on courses, Crazy. and he's, he teaches courses. Yeah. Cole Gordon, I know, spends money on courses, a lot of money on courses. Yeah. It's one of these things where it's like, if this was a scam, what would happen is the people who were purport purporting the scam would not then be doing more scammy mm -hmm. shit, but instead they're buying courses because when you consider a what is a bachelor's degree from Harvard is almost seven or eight hundred thousand dollars, some outrageous number like that. When you think about all the courses you could buy for seven hundred thousand dollars to do anything from like teaching yeah. you high ticket sales to Amazon FBA to even like anything, bro, anything website design, like learning how to, 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 to right now. There's some kid watching this right now is 18, 19 is going to take a course on like how to code for uh, artificial intelligence. And he will be a billionaire because he did this for one one thousandth the cost of a college degree. Buying courses is the new way because the education system mm. to, to, I mean, no other way to say this, the education system for the most part has failed us. And so that's the reason why these courses have come out and why they're so pervasive and they teach you actually how to be relevant and competent and make money, make a lot of money. So that's the reason why like we buy courses all the time mm -hmm. and we Every teach day. a course. That's just something that we absolutely do. Cause I, I know there was definitely a level of skepticism. I bootlegged uh, the blueprint decoded from uh, the, <laughs> nice. uh, yep. I can say uh, that the, I did too. The, the fucking, well, I bootlegged it. I bootlegged uh, what uh, I was friends with mystery and I bootlegged like his books. I like, I, uh -huh. I downloaded the PDF off Napster or some yeah. shit, right? I was very skeptical about buying these courses and now we buy them all the time because there's so much value that's in them, especially when you can get almost like say direct access yeah. Dude, the idea that Hermosi, remember he sells for a hundred million in 2017 and then he writes these books explaining how he did it like that getting access to someone's brain who's figured something like that is just so incredible and it's why like it's so important that people um that people be a part of that uh, just for people who, who like maybe aren't familiar with the course or like you maybe you watch my podcast you don't understand if you guys know who dan fleischman is the concept of do things for other people and ask for nothing in return i got that from fleischman he wasn't the first person i got it from but he's the person who i see embodies it more than anyone mm. he has helped me a ton and like i it, you know dan doesn't teach a course specifically on that but like his his that's where I got that concept from the concept of like how we use pre-selection and like women introducing you to more women calibrating you. I got that from Dan Bilzerian. The idea of like our, our, our mindset of like all of this is our fault. It doesn't make any difference what anything else happens. There is nothing that is going to stop me. You do not even have, you don't have the privilege of even affecting my state of mind to even give me the, like any apprehension whatsoever. The concept that you may stop me isn't even a realistic possibility. I get that from David Goggins, right? Obsession. And then the idea of like leadership, everything's my fault, even when it isn't my fault and communication is my responsibility. I get that from Jocko Willick. Mm. So what well, that's another thing is we attribute in this course, when somebody does something well, we give them the credit for what they did and don't act like we came up with all this shit on our own. And the, some of the best people, again, I remember, 
I've been in conversation with a guy that we were at the Playboy Mansion, ironically, and I'm talking to this one dude who, uh, and he was telling me, he's like, I love Ty's stuff. I think he has a lot of potential, but he needs to stop recommending other people's books because it's going to hurt his sales. And I was like, I don't think you're right, or you're right about that. Mm -hmm. I think you're completely wrong about that. I think having a place to collate those ideas in one place, which is what Men of Action is, and then having actual real life tacit experience of people doing, like performing those things. Again, you're going to talk to Tyler, who is a salesperson who threw his own events and changed his social life before it. Does and that make you sense? also like, you get a dedicated, like it's a dedicated one-on-one -on -one program. Like mm -hmm. we're talking about it like a course, like, and people might think oh, about yeah. it like, like a textbook or like some yeah. modules online. Like it's a one-on-one -on -one program. Like you're not going to get that from a university. Yeah. Like you're not going to get that literally anywhere else. Like you get unlimited access to your coach you could call him in the middle of the night if yeah. you want most of our clients text him while the while um they're like putting on an event and putting stuff together you get direct access to them like it's literally like a coach in your pocket at any time that you want like that's what i love about this is it's a one-on-one -on -one mm. program like you can't bootleg that you can't yeah. you can't, you can't yeah. bootleg a one-on-one -on -one so, program so, and so, so that's what, why we get such good results mm -hmm. for people so one of the things where i knew we were kind of making it was two things happened number one people trying to ha funnel hack us this was happening a lot. Our sales guys were yeah, saying all the time. Yeah. People were yeah. By the way, I have coded shit for that, so you can't you can't funnel hack us anymore because yeah. so, I have coded stuff for that because I know the patterns. Anyway, I could get and go into the whole. Team that's what, it wasn't. It, it wasn't the revenue. It was that we were being funnel hacked. That's when I started realizing we're doing well. The yeah. second thing is all these scam artists on Reddit offering the free version of our course, which isn't real, by the way. If you guys see the two hundred dollar version of our course, you're not going to get the. Course. Yeah, it's, it's like the it's yeah. like the course from like twenty twenty. Yeah, it's it's, like it's, the, it's, <laughs> it's a total. It's a, but there's over yeah. one hundred people trying to do this. That was where I, I noticed it, and then I talked to Ryan Pineda because I was trying to explain mm. it the best way, and he said. What you're paying for in your course, and Ryan and I actually, we have a, well, there's a lot of parallels between what he does and what we do, but it is community, accountability. Mm. Uh, it's community, accountability. What's the last one? I'm trying to remember. Uh, feedback. Those three things. You're paying for community, accountability, and feedback. The course, the 114 modules, is the fulcrum upon, upon which we can go back to. You know, the preacher's up there giving the sermon, but he can refer back to the Bible. Like, that's what it, the, it's the fulcrum mm. upon, it's the center of gravity. But at the same time, it, it is not the actual thing that you get, you get from from uh it's not the benefit you get or the roi from taking a men of action it is the feedback it is the accountability it is the community that you get and nothing is going yeah. to top that you can't buy that off a free course that you're you know whatever somebody somebody tried to give I our course that. away for free one time and it didn't work because there's actually been people who've tried to take our free course and then try to institute it and do their own course based on it and some some of them have ended up in legal action because they don't know the rules they don't understand they get they're way out ahead of their skis and they make some horrible fucking mistakes because they didn't take the course because they don't have that one-on-one -on -one. exactly yeah. like there's literally one gold nugget that is going to absolutely change your entire life and the entire direction that you have with your social circuits that one it's like the thing that you're like coach men mm -hmm. mentions in passing and they're and you're like oh wait what like talk about that a little bit more and then that's how like that's what's so important you can't get that from modules like you can't get that from a textbook like you can't get that from a professor like just giving you a lecture like you get that from that one-on-one -on -one mentoring which is what why it's so valuable that's why we have just tremendous growth yeah okay what makes a good salesperson? I'd say I went to a buddy of mine. He's starting his own course, and he had this whole thing. You guys have both seen the, mm -hmm. the whiteboard that I'm referring to. And on the whiteboard, it had all these different components of the business that they were going to start. And in the middle, in this little lowercase yeah. letters, it says phone sales team. And I was like, <laughs> you guys are going to want to make that in capital letters and make that a whole lot bigger because when you grow, this is the motherfucker that is going to stick you in the dick. So what can you guys talk about? <laughs> now, number one, I want to I ask you really quick about what makes a good salesperson? Because I've seen several different techniques work. And I also want to bring up about half our company, more than half our company, didn't finish college. Okay. Yeah, most uh, of them. Uh, there's a lot of different, they come from all different archetypes. You'll notice that our clientele is could not possibly be more racially and ethnically mm -hmm. diverse. Which I They're, love that. It's absolutely, absolutely love that. we did absolutely nothing to try to invoke that. Nothing. I think it has something to do with the fact that we're politically moderate, but I think it also has to do with the fact that evolutionary psychology is pervasive amongst all Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. uh, sexual selection and higher sa higher status, and it's male crazy or female. How global our clients are. Yes. Like, there's probably not a city that doesn't have. A client in it. When you when we you have people in China, yeah. like they have to get the, on a VPN. There's two, through the yeah. Firewall. There's two guys right now on VPNs in China illegally. Fucking, yeah. we're calling them out. Sorry, but that are like taking. We have tons of Chinese clients, but none of them in the the People's yeah, Republic of exactly. China. We have two of them in the People's Republic of China. This is the other thing. Okay, for those of you That's who are awesome. in, for those of you who are in sales, people this won't make. Cows, for those of you who aren't in sales, like this Omaha. won't make sense. But but for those of you who are in sales, this is going to make sense. We have a lot of clients that are of Indian descent. We actually have clients who live in India who are of Indian descent. Correct. 
Do you know how rare that is? That's actually really difficult. We, when we started doing that, you'll notice a lot of people, tons of like North American people of Indian descent, people who live in India who actually buy your program and take it, like we're trying to build a social circle in New Delhi, that is fucking hard, and they're actually able to pull it off. Yeah, I've worked like one-on-one with them. <coughs> by it's, by way, it's awesome to see. By the way, I don't know if you know, in the last couple of months, India is now the most populous country in the world. It's not China anymore. Uh -huh. India is it, is it, mm -hmm. I think it's because like China billion. lied about their um, their population, didn't they? I just saw something about this. It's, they're both at 1.4, but they're like a couple hundred million off. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what makes a great salesperson? Yeah, you'd be great to that. You're like ideal. You're, you're like a killer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I feel like some people might disagree with me about this, but I think there's really uh, there's a couple prerequisites to being good at sales, first of all. And number one is that you're working with a, a good offer. Like the offer is paramount. So if you're selling something that nobody wants, it doesn't matter how good you are you're not gonna succeed. But here's the other thing. There's two qualities that, you know, now that I've been moved up to manager and I'm participating in more of the hiring, it's two qualities that I'm really looking for. Is one, does this person actually care about making an impact? Yeah. When we talk about the saving them versus selling them thing, that is so, so fucking huge. It's probably the biggest thing. And then the other thing is, because you care, you have a relentless, you know, diabolical desire to get better at sales strategies. Because at the end of the day, the salesperson that cares the most understands what a sales call is, which is that you are empowering this person to make a decision to change their life. And so no matter what objection they throw at you, no matter what excuses they have, no matter what, you know, obstacles they put in their own way or why they're their own worst enemy, your job is to be so, you know, understand that like people always talk about the tactics of sales. And like when you're in sales, you have like this balancing act to perform where you, you have all the tactics, you have all the strategies, you're loaded with all these tools in your tool belt. But if you don't care, the person who's talking to you is going to sense that. So that is the number one thing. And when you're deploying these tactics, it's an understanding that you're helping this person change their life for the better. So the number one quality that I'm looking for with any new guy that comes over on our team and in our culture that we're trying to facilitate is somebody that really, really fucking cares about helping the person that they're talking to because that corrects for all the tactics and techniques that you could possibly study. Like people will pay tens of thousands of dollars to go to, you know, Jordan Bel Belfort seminars and learn like tonality changes. But if you actually genuinely care, For sure. your tonality yeah. automatically yes. corrects. You come across as genuine because you are genuine. You come across as challenging because you care about this person. You are challenging them to overcome a limiting belief. And it's like, it becomes less of this like sales jujitsu and more just you having an honest conversation. And Grant ironed this into me from the very start when I joined the company. It's like sales is just a good conversation, but it's a good conversation from somebody who cares a lot about yeah. helping the person they're talking to. Yeah, it, it's very helpful that a lot of the guys in Men of Action who are on the sales team went through Men of Action, I mean, almost all of them. Yeah. Uh, and then like you said, it's changed their life where we, we've had guys on there and it's like they literally went from, oh my God, that's the hottest girl I've ever seen, I'd love to meet her, to it's like you're dating her hotter friend you didn't even know <laughs> right. about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's completely yeah. changed. So that when they get on the call and they listen to somebody who's of the same socioeconomic class and the big objections that we always get is I'm too short, I'm too brown, mm -hmm. I'm African-American, mm -hmm. I'm too poor, I'm too old, and I'm too fat, or I live in a place where this won't work, or this won't work for me because I'm not experienced enough. And we destroy, like obliterate. I mean, total... We literally have a list of like yeah. every single, because we see it all the time where it's yeah. like, oh man, I'm, I'm way too fat to do this, or I'm way too old to do this. Here is 50 clients that got tremendous results yeah. that are like above 60, above 65. Yeah. And we literally have a list for it. And it's because like, it just doesn't matter. Like they're fake objections. Like, like the program works. We get, we enroll hundreds of people every single month into the program. It's been around for three plus years. Like it works. It, it, it just absolutely works. We have such a low refund rate because it works. Mm. And so it's not a it's not a, a matter of like does it will does the program factually work? It's it will the program work for me in my special situation, but we've had almost a thousand people join the program and oh, almost more than that actually. And uh looking at like every single racial background, every single different story, every literally every like, there, background, every, every <clears throat> single thing you could think about has already been solved. So yeah. you're not like this like unique special snowflake that's like coming in and you're like, I have 
you know, I have the most unique situation. There's no way this can work for me. Like it's absolutely going to work for you because like you talk about Mike, like it's just evolutionary psychology. Like it's hardwired in every single person's brain that it just works. Like it, it just works. Like you, you hack human biology and, and psychology in a way that like is in your favor. And it's just, you know, it's a phenomenal thing. Yeah. One more thing I would like to add to what makes a good salesperson is because we deal with objections and self-limiting beliefs with prospects all day long. It is very, very important that a salesperson is doing that for themselves in their own lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I am constantly having to overcome my own self-limiting sure. beliefs and objections because if I'm not, then I'm going to let this guy off the hook with his self-limiting belief that I relate to. Like, so I have to overcome my own self-limiting beliefs in order to be able to persuade somebody to overcome theirs because I was able to do it first. So it's being a leader. And one, of, really what it one, is. Of, one of the hard Every sales reps, a client. Yeah. Yeah. One, exactly. One of the hard parts, I think, also is that. When they have objections, they kind of expect us to sort of talk them out of the objections, but we show them like evidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's evidence. too much. They get overload. You've said before they'll just jump off the call. Like they'll, freak, <laughs> they'll like freak out. They're like, they're, they're, oh, they're, like the, the thing with Tristan is like, like Tristan's Indian, and he's like, no, you're, he's like, this won't work for me because I'm Indian. And Tristan's like, I'm fucking Indian. Yeah, they're literally yeah. Like, I'm yeah. fucking yeah. Indian. Telling like, them and, that that doesn't and, work. And, 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 like, and then the and then the, and then the guy the guy goes, yeah, but are you really Indian? And I'm like, 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 I'm so like, this is so successful for me. You don't even believe I'm Indian. Like, do you understand what you're doing? Like, do you understand how your beliefs have done, have done this to you? It's just so amazing to me. It's like one of these situations where it's actually backfired on us because we have so much evidence. People want like being a victim is so comfortable. It's mm. like this warm blanket of victimhood it just feels so good it's the best pill in the world it's better than heroin and you just completely rob them of their victim mentality when you just destroy uh, yeah you, i'm too old uh, you met johnny walker who's fucking yeah. his 50, birthday, 50th yeah, birthday it's, it's 50 it. it's 50th birthday today yeah. about, and you know who's coming to his birthday his 21 year old girlfriend that's who's coming to his fucking birthday <laughs> she, wished him happy birthday she, she came to wish him his happy birthday get the fuck out of here the dude's a fucking grandfather and everything he's doing here and by the mm -hmm. way he was overweight and lost a bunch of weight yeah. But from doing this course, from kind of having some understandings about, about what our principles were. And so, like, there's just no, you destroy, but, like, people want to just be slowly talked out of their excuses. Mm. We just rip the rip the neck out of their excuses, sometimes so brutally that they can't even deal with it, man. It is it is one of the craziest things I've seen. You said before, it's like, you know, Michael doing limited calls, he's jumping on the call, and then they just jump off. Because they don't think, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, not so gonna, scared. I'm not going to get access <laughs> yeah. to Michael. And I'm like, what, what the fuck? And I'll just come yeah, on there. It's in your contract. A, I'm wearing limited access. I'm wearing, I'm wearing yeah. fucking tank top and I walk over to his place what up motherfucker let's go and they're like what he's actually here talking to me what and it's one of the because it just destroys like that but I enjoy destroying people's objections I really do which we're doing a debate on um on Saturday four PUAs versus me on cold approach versus social circle and I just love I love destroying people's objections but some people they don't like it it's too it's too hard too fast right you're pulling the rug out from underneath them too violently yeah. and they have an issue because again crucial conversations you have to give people a way out and sometimes it's just too much when they see you know Anthony DeRico who's vertically challenged to say the least with beautiful He's women all like the time less than 5 feet right yeah maybe yes Somewhere around there? Somewhere around there. Yeah. But like the, he's vertically challenged. And for him to be surrounded by hot women all the time, it just obliterates their objections. And then they're just like, they don't, instead of saying, wow, thank you guys for exposing me to the truth. They're like, it's almost like telling someone who's Muslim, there is no Muhammad or telling someone who's Christian, there is no Jesus. They're just not ready to hear it. Like they just, it would, it would be an analog, analogy to that. It's too much, too fast, and they can't deal with it. So that's, I think that's been an issue uh, that we've had before. I also. think Anthony is such a good thing to touch on. Like Anthony started from like pure depression yeah. moved from i don't remember boston, boston to la not knowing anyone didn't know a single probably the hardest person. city to build a social circle yeah by far a high harder. status one yeah anyway. by far like la is, is so tough and then he is like five foot five foot one or something like that and he's balding and he's old too like i, I forget how old he is but late 30s yeah Ouch. no i think he's like 30 <laughs> like, so like so like we love you anthony he's love actually anthony. A, he's anthony actually on the one of my favorite people yeah. in the company yeah. he's actually on the team i really love you so if you're watching this anthony like i really appreciate you a lot like you really crush Sorry, it keep going. Um, but you're just such a good like testimony about like you, like there's so many external pressures that like mm -hmm. like every excuse like anthony had and then he is, has like the one of the best social circles in LA. Like he goes. It's to better every, than me. It's yeah. better than your yeah. social. You don't circle. know in, in LA, Anthony is more it, like it, this wasn't ever the case before. But I would say in the last year, Anthony right now is more hooked up than I am. Yeah, like, Anthony, Anthony went from real quick touch on your point. He went from traveling from Boston to LA, not knowing anyone, 
too. He recently co-hosted the Maxim party yeah. in LA that we went to. He, 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 he has the badass. list. He works the door. He gets the girls in now. Like literally, he's working for Teatro, Babes in Toyland. He's working Dan Fleischman. He brings girls to his events. If the Playboy Mansion was open, I guarantee you, uh, Anthony DeRico would have a list for it. I guarantee you, he would. Yep. Yeah, like, that's that's a- what's happened. And like, hey, just consider this situation where it's like, how many guys are out there? They're like, I'm older, balding, and I'm five foot one, and I have no chance with women. To his situation where he is legitimately exposed to more beautiful women than I am, and it's crazy watching Dorico like that, that he's able to pull that off. I think that's probably another good thing to touch on, like uh, what we did better than everyone else is like a repeatable process that it's not just you achieve results. Yes, it's every single person that goes to the program achieves results. Yeah, I think that's one thing we did extremely really well is like we actually fulfill on the transformation that uh, we promise, and you know a lot of our clients are referrals. Yeah. and that's one of the things I mentioned on the calls as well. Like if you followed. Arnold Schwarzenegger's workout program and diet routine, would you succeed? You're pretty much guaranteed success. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with our program. If you go through the course, jump on the mentoring calls, complete the action guides, you're pretty much guaranteed success no matter where you are, what your background is, mm-hmm. what your height is, what your body type is like or anything. So It yeah. almost is a direct equation of how much you put in is how much you get out. Mm-hmm. Like it is the, a direct equation. Like, yes, it, exactly. It's, yeah. It's not just correlation or luck. It's like it's literally math. And the, the only more way- invites you make, the more people show up. Mm-hmm. The better your Instagram is, the higher probability they come. The yeah. only the only reason this works, again, we, you, you and I have t- talked about this recently. We had a client, and we were worried about selling to him because this guy had suffered some kind of brain damage. He was still had functioning, uh, functioning, but he there was very clear like something had happened uh, to him, and he joins like the it course. Was visible, it was visible, visible, brain, visible, yeah. visible brain damage. And we we had him join the course, and I was a little concerned initially. He just threw this awesome fucking photo shoot the other day <laughs> that I wish I was at, and I'm like, fuck, I was. Oh, that's right. This works for everyone. Yeah. This is human fucking evolution, natural selection. This always works. There are no exceptions. Now I. I remember and even seeing him do it it was like that i was like it totally understood we've had guys definitely on the spectrum asd that sure. have, that Absolutely. have gone through and had incredible like met amazing girlfriends because of it and so that whole thing has, has worked out a fantastic it's kind of like, it's I think, kind of like uh ahead. just losing like it's like similar losing weight if you just exercise and at a calorie deficit you'll lose weight no matter what your ethnicity is no matter what cultural background you have no matter what city you're in whether it's new york city or omaha nebraska like one of our clients doesn't matter your height. Same thing with our program. It works as long as you stick to the core principles and implement it. It works no matter who you are, where you are, what you do. Yeah. I mean, we got brown, black, white, Asian, Native American. We got college age kids. We got grandpas. Yeah. Yeah. We got everything in between from year olds, all over the world, every country. People, like 40 million. we do not miss. Yeah. We you have know, a guy there yeah. that's killing it. You know. You know what? Um, one thing I like to do is so you, on Zoom you can go 49 wide, like you can show 49 people's faces at the same time. And I like to do that sometimes mm-hmm. on like the Monday calls is to show everyone else. I'm like, do you see the racial diversity here? We did nothing to plan this. What this means is that you all share the same proclivities within your genetics. That is why you're all here, which means what, then this is working for everyone in the course, which means this is somewhere is pervasive in evolution. This is like somewhere hardwired in you and hardwired in the world that reacts to you, which is why this always works. Yeah. So it's very difficult for people to grasp that. I think it's, I think it's tough for people because like, uh, especially as a man, like you grow up your whole life, like physically attracted to women. And there's like, you talk about this, Mike, where there's like one thing or one or two things that a man's attracted to and like 240, 50, something that a, like a woman's attracted to. Like what are the numbers? Uh, there are a um, hundred and well, 238 reasons why 237 reasons why women have sex. They've yeah. been identified, and there's like four reasons why men have sex. Yeah, so it's that, it's that uh, Why Women Have Sex book. Like, it's a, yeah. pheno- it's a phenomenal book. Um, and I feel like guys are so stuck on, like, I am not this, like, 10 out of 10 male model. Like, therefore, I can't have women. I can't have this incredible life. Um, or I don't know how to socialize with people, or I don't know how to talk. Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, your looks aren't necessarily, like, a learned skill, but your communication is. Like, your fitness is. The way you groom yourself is. The way you, like, like... Like anybody, any man has such a remarkable um, uh, natural talent that they can get better at almost anything. Like mm-hmm. you're a man, like uh, men start off at like the sexual marketplace value of like zero where women start off much higher and then it, it decreases for men. It like increases a lot farther yeah. um, over time as they get older. And so like as a man, if you're not increasing your skills, if you're not learning, if you're not, if you're not going out there and, and finding mentors and reading a bunch of books and like learning, like, well, of course you're not going to, you know, be with the woman that you want because you're not trying, you're not doing anything. But at the same time, like women find so many different things attractive Mm -hmm. and for men it's like i just find physical beauty attractive so men are like i i think that i need to be this like absolute male model therefore i can't get results but then like you see the people on on the client calls and like 
some of them are not very attractive and get way better results than I have ever had in my entire life. And I, I literally asked them like, dude, how did you do that? Like I have one specific client that I, that I work with that has thrown by far the best events that I've ever seen a single client do. And he is Indian and he crushes it. He is so poignant. He is so good at what he does. And, um, I, I really, really like him, dude. And he is out absolutely, he's married to Yeah, it. same thing. One of the clients sends me pictures where he's parting with Leonardo DiCaprio. And I'm mm -hmm. like, how are exactly, you doing yeah. this? Like, I mean, you, yeah. you, you realize, like, because I realize the course works, but then when it works that well for them, I'm like, holy shit, like, what's going on? Right. Hey, that's that's Drake? You're just parting with Drake? Yeah. What the fuck am I missing? How did I not get invited One to this? One of our clients was invited to PDD's New Year's Eve party. Yeah. So that just shows how far you could take it if you just implement what's in the program. Yeah, man, it's it, that part is bonkers about yeah. the, uh, about you get, because one of the things will happen if you guys end up working for a company is whoever you sell or whoever you become friends with in the company when one of their things they're required to do is to tag you in social media stories so whenever they post a story they tag i get tagged in like a hundred stories every week you know from guys that, that like go out to clubs or do something awesome or whatever and if it's like something kind of lascivious they'll just send me like the in the whisper mode or whatever <laughs> yeah. uh but like you get that all the time you get tagged in those those kind of things all the time but it's really great because it works you know that is one of the things that works so well it works and you know, go kind ahead. of going back into what makes a good sales rep, I think conviction and belief in what you're selling. Yeah. So I think just just constantly every single day being bombarded with all the success clients are having makes it really, really easy to not even sell, just tell people about the program. And we know like for the sales team, every single person that joins the program, you know, their life is going to be transformed. You know, not only will they achieve what they said they want to achieve on the call, they'll probably get 10 X set. Yeah. So I sure, think that like conviction to, and belief. I'd like to ask you um, what. Uh, have you seen in like clients that have like their lives have changed because from like a female perspective like I'm sure you meet like a bunch of like really not great guys in Vegas and then I'm sure you meet a lot of like the guys in men of action the clients I know you've talked to a couple of them mm -hmm. like what's been your experience been like from like a woman's viewpoint um, on, on on the people that join the program just even the way they start a conversation is mm. better because you know how right the, the, the creepy <laughs> like messaging I I always know <laughs> from the social media that it's one of your clients. Yeah. Nice, nice. There's nice. a Great. look and I'm like, oh, this is one of Michael's clients. I'll, I'll check it later. Oh, that's definitely one of Michael's clients. I'll check it later. Um, they're really respectful. Um, and just the way they present themselves is very, very different. It's just a level above a lot of people that are online. I've noticed that. And so I've had only good in, encounters with people from Men of Action, 100%. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, going back to what you said about the offer, you said that before, <clears throat> like myself and Char, we kind of handle the organic side of the content creation and I take it upon myself and I'm sure Char does too, to make it easier for the sales team. Like the sales team should get more laydowns. Like I, I can't imagine being like a salesperson working for like say Alex Hermosi. You have so much trust and you're such a fan mm -hmm. of Alex Hermosi that their sales team probably just gets tons of fucking laydowns. I don't I don't know specifically what he's selling, but you know, some guys like that. Wes Watson doesn't even need a sales team because he gets his whole thing is just nothing but laydowns, right? And so it's our job to do that for them, our job to be the offensive lineman for the sales team so that they can, you know, <laughs> we can block so they can get them the ball. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing I think we take it personal. In this in this company, you never hear me saying, if the sales team has a bad week, I'm like, come on guys, do better. In, in my eyes, I'm like, I need to go on another podcast and say some crazy shit that goes viral so our sales team gets more leads. That's always the way I see it. Is it my responsibility and Char's responsibility in order to create the content to do that? But I will say, I, this one huge piece that you're missing that would solidify you and sell itself over there time. It goes. I need to write a book. You need a fucking book. Mm -hmm. Tired of you always recommending everybody else's books. Okay. You need one of your own. I agree. It's I it's agree. an old school thing too. Yeah. They tell you in the beginning, you want to put yourself on the map, write a book. It that will immediately people, oh, he has a book. Mm. And they know what it's about. Okay. And then they know what your offer is and everything because it's the book. Michael, what would it take to get you to write it a would book? Take a guy, a it, it would take a guy. <laughs> it, it would take a guy to come over and just yeah. like listen to me like a therapist on my couch and just ask me questions for about a month or whatever. It's basically like Bulzarian's first book was that. It, that's what it was. But he said it wasn't in his voice. It would be something similar to that. We need, I'm gonna start looking. A yeah, little but bit it would cool. be anybody watching this. If you yeah. uh, if you have skills in writing, yeah. like I don't necessarily Basically, want a ghostwriter. I, I do want it's, your it's, general. No, 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 no so, to it, so it would it would like, like, No, it wouldn't be a ghostwriter. So cool. so what happens is the first edit that they yeah. would come up with. 
And then I would, you, you see, whenever you guys run ads, I change the word. Like the other day, you, we were going to run an ad where it says I was friends with Mark, War, Mark Wahlberg. I don't fucking know Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> who writes our copy? It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really funny. It's like, it's called, because, yeah, it's yeah but no, I, I get why somebody said that because it would seem like I would know him, but I don't know him actually. I, but but, yeah. but it, was, it was one of these situations where like, I think that's the only way it would work. It, we would have to buy back your time. It yeah. would have to be something where I'm literally either on the phone with the guy or the guy's hanging out with me while I'm playing Grand Theft Auto and he just asking me questions because I just don't know that. I have like I've talked to Bulzarian and look, obviously I have two best-selling authors as friends Dan Bulzarian and Rollo Tomasi mm -hmm. and I talked to them about this and it's the hardest thing in the world they do Rollo's in love with doing it right Rollo this is his he's he's he has a temperament to do it just like you have a temperament for coding I was a coder 25 years ago I don't know that I could get myself back in gear no to become a coder yeah for sure it was visual basic it was like back oh, in business nasty, school dude. yeah um so so like it's C++ back but like 25 years Ooh, ago C++ yeah man. so so do, going back and, and like getting my brain in gear to do that or writing a book would be hard me speaking the book into existence and then having somebody like um, like turn it into a book is definitely something I could do, but it have to be it would have to be like that. Cool. So you mean right. you would need somebody to come over and do exactly uh -huh. what I do every night, which is ask you questions. Yeah, you pretty much. Yeah, the, you you but, I gotta start writing this shit down. Yeah, but, 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 I'm gonna be but, there. But, but, but the thing is, they'd have to go back. Like so, for instance, there were four shootings at my high school when every year there was a shooting at my high school, and I'd need somebody to go back and fact check and say, okay, here's the story about the guy shooting himself in the leg during picture day. Here's the shooting the story of the guy getting murdered when Michael was a freshman. Here's the story about Corey. Uh, uh, his name is Corey Montgomery. He's my best friend. He got shot four times in the chest when I was a sophomore. Someone would have to go through and fact check every single thing that I said in order to do the book. Our vice president, our vice principal went to prison for embezzlement. Uh, so did the the superintendent of the school system also went to prison. Like all this crazy stuff that happened when I was in high school. Like I would need someone to go back and do fact checks on all that kind of stuff. Also the like stuff like I don't want to vaguely say the number of hours I have. I have about 700 flying hours, I think. In the, I want somebody to get all of that shit perfectly right because I want somebody coming back later and saying Michael lied about his military service or some shit like that. Honestly, so there's, like, there's a little bit more to it. Like, we just were talking about like quash, uh, squashing beliefs. Like, all this sounds pretty easy. Yeah, I was going to say that doesn't yeah. sound hard. Right. Like, let's do it. 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 I, got, I got three shows I do. You guys you figure guys out somebody. To figure out somebody. Yeah. <laughs> one, thing, one thing I can that's, do is. That's one thing one I, I do is talk about. Like, the, the access that the team has to you. Like, yeah. uh, you just mentioned, Tyler, you have your door open to Tyler. He can walk in whenever he likes. So yeah, yeah he does. I he literally does. moved in right next door. For share, sure. Yeah. Share a wall with him. Kylie, put some clothes on, put some fucking clothes on. <laughs> Tell your girlfriend to put some clothes on Kylie. How about everybody put some clothes on real quick. Tyler's coming over. How about oh wait, Tyler's coming over. You don't want to put clothes on. What the fuck, honey? What are you doing? <laughs> How about pad the walls? Pad the wall? Is it that bad? <laughs> no, no. Just Is it that bad, bro? No. Oh, sorry. Michael's okay. leading by oh, example. Are you, are success. you on the apartment? That yeah, his, we, we share walls, bro. We share walls. The bedroom wall? The bedroom wall. The kitchen wall in my apartment shares wall with his bedroom. Got it, wall. got it. Okay. So I eat dinner in my room. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I pray really loud. I don't know what he's, trying to, what he's trying to insinuate. Yeah, you have you have quite a few people praying with yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. All right, uh, cool. What do we have planned in the future for the company? What do you see as the plans, let's say, the next year, five years, 10 years? Yeah, one thing, um, uh, I got a lot planned. Uh, we do have like a Michael Chatbot coming out, which is honestly like really, really good. Um, it's like, chat gpt meets michael sartain and i've been playing around with it and i love the answers and i love it and i think it's gonna be extremely valuable for, for, for people um not sure if that'll be a paid thing or a free thing we're still working that out um next thing is uh more vegas immersion right now vegas mm -hmm. immersion is like kind of like exclusive to our clients um we are going to start opening that up to more of the public uh to so that they can come to um, Vegas Immersion, and Miguel, you can talk about that. I know you're the head of that. We keep sell, we keep selling those out, and like yeah. I was, like, yeah, to be honest with you, me and Grant one. were kind of skeptical because of the the headache that it was becoming. But now the guys are so incredibly because we worked out the bugs. Guys are so happy at the end of Vegas Immersion. Yeah. Yeah. They're so happy, bro. They come up to me before in tears. Yeah, and so yeah. I think I think we we probably we're going to have to do more of that. Yeah, yeah. I read the testimonials, um, mm. like the 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 written feedback because we get feedback from every single. Those, person you don't every know, it, it, it's a week you get to spend in Vegas like immersion and and three of the days you're with me I, I coach three of the the different spots but it's seven days that you're there so like Miguel correct me if I'm wrong but it's like we focus on like okay how how can you build your day one social circle in a new city and then after that how can you elaborate on that into like your month one social circle mm -hmm. so that you know like the exact steps of getting from day one to month one like what what's yeah. the what's the micro steps and the macro steps that you need to take and then it's like also your your year one social circle so can you like elaborate on like what Vegas 
Immersion is? Oh, man. Vegas Immersion, it's an immersive experience, hence the name. Um, it's a week-long event that literally I got so many testimonials how life-changing it is. I don't know how many testimonials I can share on air. But, uh, yeah, so it's literally like a crash course of the six-month mentoring program that we have condensed into a single yeah, week. But, but there's a couple other things you guys have to understand. So, for instance, when I explain to you uh, treat them all the same, make them talk about themselves, how to break rapport, whatever. You can't really do that virtually over Zoom. If you come to Vegas Immersion, like you're just around so many women that you sort of learn the things that happen. And also, if you're a member of our sales team or whatever, you can just come to any Vegas Immersion. We just let you guys come if you are if you yep. work for us. It's yeah, just, if you're it's hitting numbers, of, if you're hitting KPI, like you're, go to Vegas Immersion, yeah, we want you to have fun. For sure. And the other, the other so like, well, I'll host the, I host the three biggest bikini competitions in the world. During the bikini competitions, that's when we have Vegas Immersion is during the competitions. Mm -hmm. So now here's the second thing is you get is you get you know, it's like the first thing we say is fix your fucking Instagram, step number one. And so how do you fix your Instagram? You have pictures that show uh, competency, relevancy, and access to scarce resources, and maybe beautiful women. And what's a great place to get that? Come here for a week yeah. and just do photo shoots every day. <laughs> and then you're sitting there getting instruction in the evening. And then at night, you just fucking go hard in the club. And like, that's what we do every single day while your dudes are exhausted by yeah. the end of Vegas Immersion. We provide yeah. the video editor, the photo editor. You get back a month's worth of content, of great content. Yeah. Like, really, I, really I need good to do content. Vegas Immersion. Man, I need some new yeah. content. DM me, yeah. DM me if you're interested, but yeah. like that whole entire week is like how to do your day one soul circles. So we teach you how to approach people that you don't know and turn strangers into friends. And then there's you pivot that snowballs into how to create like a week long soul circle. How do you make high status male friends? How do you make female friends? Then that snowballs into uh, your month one soul circle. How do you start having events that bring all these people together? And that's like the scalability and the leverage behind. Um, how people are able to accelerate their social life without spending, like our clients probably spend like two to three hours a week to do all this. And it's because of the leverage behind the social media and the events. So like the month one soul circle is how to have events that bring the high status men you want to connect with, the beautiful girls you want to connect with, and put them all in one place. And if you're hosting the event, then you're automatically the highest status person there. And then that goes into like a year uh like year soul circle what does your soul circle look like over the year and then you know michael comes in and teaches like lifetime soul circle what do you want your soul circle to look over the lifetime um so that's like the teachings then we actually go out to the clubs and infield and you know, help you develop that skill of turning strangers into friends then we included a social media boot camp portion as well where we professionally shoot and edit a month worth of content that kind of goes into the social media aspect as Shara mentioned just from looking at someone's Instagram she sees their client because oh, that's, our one of clients have, that's one of Michael's guys yeah. yeah we have a like guys in our program have such a leg up against the average guys Instagram because I don't know if you've seen that it's guys getting Instagram, so but it's, trash. it's yeah. getting <laughs> since we started the course it's gotten even worse yeah it like has. like the advantage that our guys have is so much more the new uh, Instagram update that came out where they they firewall you for you can only send one message to a person you don't know we figured out a way to completely surpass that so now our guys now everyone else every like two-bit club promoter yeah. in the country can't message girls anymore and we can yeah so the advantage <laughs> that we have is even greater than it was before because we figured out how to get around that firewall then we even kind of what, we, what i mentioned earlier like one of the things we did really well is like we didn't get into the money we got into this to transform people's lives so like uh oshkan and casey shout out them they kind of run the program for us like even though casey literally flies from a different country just for this event um and we even at we're always looking for ways to improve so like Vegas immersion is 10 times better than the first one we did a year ago. And we even added more to it. You get more time with Michael, more time with the coaches, more time infield, more photos. Like the social media boot camp used to have like a wreck. Now you even include a car. Now the most recent one included like you get photos of the Lamborghini where we rent a car. We use our own money to rent a luxury car so you get photos. We included daytime workshops where we teach like an Instagram crash course, how to post pictures, how to write captions, how to like build your list, how to make female friends. Um, you know, you get to hang out with Michael. The last day of immersion, no. <laughs> you play basketball and beat the shit out of each other. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about graduation night no. at the And then the graduation <laughs> night, that same night when you're sore yeah. and beat up from hooping with all the other guys, this is like a little mini tournament we do. At the very last night, you're surrounded by women during graduation. It's wild. And speaking you know the number one thing people want at the end of immersion? More immersion. So speaking of what you said about client writing testimonials, so from the most recent immersion we had, 
one of our clients, I won't say his name, but he was like, hey, Ashkan, really sorry I won't be able to make it today. Please give Michael my respects and huge thanks for everything. Let's just say I had a wild night with two girls from the club and I'm a little under the weather. Weather. The program was absolutely incredible. Such an insane amount of value and information. I completely transformed this week and super pumped to hit the ground running when I returned back to San Francisco. Thank you for everything. 10 exclamations. I love wait, that. Wait, I love let's that. go. Wait, a wild night with two girls? We don't recommend that. We recommend <laughs> Bible study and <laughs> abstinence in men of action. We do not condone that. But other than that, it sounds like a great message. Sounds yeah. awesome. <laughs> Terrific. Breaking rapport. All right. Well, so the future thing you said before about uh, Vegas Immersion, anything else? Yeah, Mo Chatbot, Vegas Immersion. Um, we're going to have a low ticket offer coming out too yeah. um, that I'm pretty excited about. So all of you guys that, we, listen, I love you guys. The ones that are hitting me up, you guys are in Brazil, you're in Indonesia, you're in India, whatever. You're like, I've got tons of people from Africa to hit me up. You can't afford the program and I totally understand that. Is it just a function of... Yeah, of, it's, of, it's, a, it's, it's unfortunate. A, it's a function of economics. And because of that, we're going to have another course for you. If you're watching this and you're in Men of Action, don't worry, you're going to get that course too. Don't worry mm, about it. We're not yeah, going yeah. to cut you out from that course yeah. but this is going to be a ton of value and we're going to add new pieces to the low ticket offer every month just think of like 67 steps very similar to that go ahead what do you what do we have coming up in the future oh so um one of the things is well speaking of events just more live events because that's one of the things we did our first moa summit last year and it was just amazing to see the community that we built and everyone in person especially now after covid the world is much more remote people from all over it's an online mentoring program so everyone's in zoom um, but just more live events to kind of bring people together. So we have MOA Summit, which is actually going to be here in a couple of weeks, um, where it's like a live event. They come down for a day. Mike and some other guest speakers talk for, for multiple, multiple hours. Uh, Vegas Immersion Program. It was so successful that we ran out of spots that we're basically forced to do one every single month next year because we only did one every other month this year. Uh, more social media boot camps. So for the social media boot camps, we have one in L.A., we kind of piggyback off the events Michael's hosting. So he's going to be hosting Bays and, to Bays and Toyland charity event, uh, who's ran by Steve Fowler, where that social media boot camp includes a, includes a VIP table. Uh, the one we did last year, Little John was a performer, and we had the table next to him. That was so wild. I interviewed um, uh, Terrell Davis. Yeah. So such a good time. Yeah. No way. Yeah, so it includes a VIP yeah. table. It includes uh, lunch with Michael and all the other clients, one-on-one uh, -on -one time with Michael, and then a month worth of uh, Instagram content. Um, and then um, alumni program. So that's one of the things is there is a time limit to when you're in the program. And this is one thing I love about Michael. Like, like I said, he was already a millionaire when we joined the program. So he got into it purely just to help more guys where there is a time limit to the program, six to 12 months. And then Michael came to us and he was like, hey, like there's some guys now in the program that I still want to help. And he kind of like forced us to create a, an affordable alumni program where we cut the price in like a fifth. Um, to make it more yeah. affordable yeah, for just, guys. Just, just so, so we're clear. Yeah, so just so we're clear. When you when you start the the program, you do six months or a year on the just the Tuesday call. Then when you go to the alumni program, you get the Tuesday call and the Thursday call. There's a lot. There's a lot of. Yeah. There's way more calls than just the Tuesday. But yeah. Specifically with you. It's yeah. Just Tuesday. specifically yeah. with me, you get to, you get the yeah. Thursday call, but you still get to go on the Tuesday call because I want your expertise to help the new guys. It's almost like a mastermind. Yeah. It is a mastermind. And then and then on top of that, you're paying like a fifth as much. So we want you to stay in it forever. But the Thursday call that we have is only. Only for people who have finished the program, gone through the initial the, the initial protocol, and then you get to some expertise. And I'll just give you a little hint, wink, wink. These are the people we hire to work at our company, <laughs> the ones who end up getting in the alumni program. Yeah, so like, like we're always looking for ways to add value. Like when Michael wasn't able to touch every single person, because we started off with like 10 clients, 50 clients, now we have hundreds of clients. And then the guys that have been in the program for three years are now our customer success managers, where we pay them full time, where a lot of them quit their jobs. Um, there we pay because we pay them well enough, uh, where they work full time, and that's what Grant was talking about earlier. Where you get a dedicated coach. So not only do you learn from Michael, who's twenty years ahead of you, it can give you like the big macro picture. You also are learning from the guy, you know, a year ahead of you, two years ahead of you, that went through the same exact journey you're going through. Which is why so many of our clients succeed so quickly. Is because back to that Warren Buffett quote: Yes, you have to learn from mistakes, but no one said that to be your own. So you avoid pretty much every single landmine yeah. that could possibly occur. Um, so just building out the program. So yeah, I my, guess, my course is basically the course that I wish someone yeah. had given me 25 years ago. So to summarize some things for the future, more live events to bring people together includes the summit, Vegas Merchant merge program, social media boot camps, um, the alumni program for people that kind of graduate, how do we provide continuous value for them? 
And then further down the line, obviously we've been very, very successful. Further down the line, I would love to kind of help other coaches build seven figure, eight figure mentoring programs because we're well on our way. For sure. Eight figures. For sure. Uh, what do we have coming up in the future? What do you What do you want to see in the future? Just keep growing the team. Our sales team is is just a thing of beauty. It's like magic when we hang out and every meeting, everybody's laughing. We're all crushing yeah. it. Uh, so just to continue on that path, um, we're bringing on some new guys, and uh, well, they're going through tryouts. And so we'll see if they make the team. But if they do, we're going to have some new heads on the team, new faces on the Zoom calls, and to continue that path and keep building this culture. You too. So. How many people have we had applied total for different jobs? Oh, and then how many God. compared to how many have the, we hired? The sales over 550 people have applied. It's I in, think it's more than that now. I think oh, now, now it is. Like that was like three six, months seven, ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it's like six, seven, eight hundred, something like that. For the sales yeah. position specifically. And we've hired... God, less than one percent of that. Yeah, so it's we, honestly we, we, harder to join the sales team than it is to get in Harvard. It's harder. <laughs> it's harder to join the sales team than it is Harvard. to become yeah, a Navy yeah, SEAL. Tristan. Yeah. Tristan did both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah no, for sure. Like, so about seven hundred people applied, and we've hired ten. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I love the camaraderie in the sales team. I don't, I don't know. We touched on that, but like your roommates on the sales team, one of our other sales reps flying up in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. One of the setters is flying up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so it's amazing to see that you guys are like. It's not like. Most jobs, you only hang out with people when you're at work, and then you hang out with other people for fun. It's kind of like both, as you guys mentioned earlier. Like Everyone on the team is someone you want to hang out with because they're on the same path, they're on the same journey, they're growing in the same direction. Dude, when, when Tristan asked me if I wanted to move in with him, yeah. I did not hesitate for a <laughs> split second. I was like, thank God, yeah. let's do this. Like, what are we, Where are we moving? Yeah. He's like, Panorama Towers. Okay, perfect. Right next, next to Michael. Next to Michael. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I could say yes like that because I knew that, you know, I spend more time talking to Tristan than anybody else in my life. Yeah. That goes with all the sales guys. Like, we're all talking outside of work, on the meetings. Like, you, like I said at the beginning, you guys are like my family and the sales team is like my best friend. So, mm. yeah, that that's the culture that we have. And I'm really excited to continue building it, especially being the manager now and facilitating that and helping the guys grow to be sales professionals and also make a huge impact with all the guys that we're going to be uh, close and moving forward. So, Ooh, so one so, thing I want to add for yeah. what's in the future is just how do, can we help clients? And that's always a focus is how do we help clients achieve more success in a shorter period of time? So one of the things, um, this is actually um, something we did recently is like every single week or bi weekly, we're going to have meetings yeah. on how can we improve the product. I think, so, I think we need to figure out a way, not through us specifically, but to institute uh, a virtual assistance and art of artificial intelligence with some of our guys. Like the ability for a guy, a normal guy, to be able to m mash through a 4,000 girl uh, list of girls to invite to a thing, your whole life. If, guys, I'm listening to you. For anybody who's listening to this, if you could get 4,000 hot girls on a list and message all of them with a really, really nice looking social, like uh, Instagram that you have to a really good offer, max and party, charity event or whatever, you do that four times a year, your entire life has changed. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use dating apps anymore. You have, you absolutely will have like numerous women today just doing that one thing alone, which is the first four steps in the uh, MOA free course, th then that would just t totally change yeah. your life. But yeah, being able to do that by just pushing a button and having a VA yeah. do the whole thing, I think that would be just irreparably good. Incredible. And don't take the way your Instagram looks right now and go start building a list. Yeah. Fix yeah. your Instagram. Bro, if, you have to add, if you have to go, hey, Michael, can you check my Instagram? I'm like, have you had yeah. my guys check it? And he's like, no, then there's a 95% chance it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Char, what do, you, what, do you, what do you want to see in the future? Um, just mm. in terms of content, mm. um, getting you to do short form we're working on because you all direct a camera direct a ca yeah but yeah. it's it's short form because we always take your long form and cut it short yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i'm stoked for direct to camera stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. so I think it is gonna, gonna be cry. direct to yeah. camera because you... i'm a little shy on camera so i'm not really sure if this is gonna work and, and i'm not very loquacious so i'm not sure how that would work <laughs> and finding those pieces of content that you had in your coaching calls that we can use and share with other people too just because i think people are missing that and we're working on that as well um i think you guys need merch you know, I think you've got yeah. Rolo made Access Vegas merch. Have you seen it? That's no. Fun. Yes. Send me that. So, we, we, but we need we need we need it. We need merch with action. statements on it. It needs to say we do. We don't we Instagram. don't listen to what anybody <laughs> has to say. Somebody collects all six T-shirts. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. have six <laughs> T-shirts. They come out. They collect. Guys, you ask me the same question the same every day. day. <laughs> yes. no, I want a shirt that says she does not sleep with you because of your intent. She only sleeps with you because of your status and have like be on a T-shirt and just walk around. That'd be funny. I think you. I mean, I think it's time. I think you guys have enough people that would wear it and just sort of the branding pieces I want to see. And then um, your book, of okay. course. Mm. I think we are missing a newsletter that just recaps what's going on in Men of Action, what's coming, mm. something monthly, a monthly email. 
um, that I'll bug you about later. <laughs> mm. But just because there's people that like, oh, sh I forgot. There, I didn't know this was coming up. The Vegas immersion or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Maybe when it goes public, I want to be a part of that. So people aren't missing. Oh, we had a new YouTube coming out. <laughs> I didn't check. Yeah, we, the, we, we try to do group. that on school. But I know yeah. you do that on school, but yeah. like some people, you know, we just don't have that long form content for sure. and email. Yeah. Anyway, for so sure. I'm just here to sort of fix, like, just look for ways for people to also gain more access to the content. Mm -hmm. You know, you have readers and then you have people that like to watch. And so sort of coming together on that. We actually have like uh, somewhat of a book that uh, you help write, which is actually really good. So it's at MOA, uh, uh, MOA mentoring com slash training slash manifesto. Mm -hmm. And it really is oh, yeah. like the uh, it really is like the A to Z steps mm -hmm. of like building a social circle. And it's like it's really, really good. Like you help write it. Um, I did a lot of it as well. But um, it like it's an extremely valuable piece of content. Like for anybody watching, I'd really recommend that you watch, uh, that you read that. It's very long because there's <laughs> there's so much value in it. And um, like that's a really good place to start. So like I mean we could make that into like an ebook and do something sure. with that. Hit me up on my Instagram and I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> one one thing I will say is if uh, if you are watching this video, if you click the link in the description, we also will have a link to a free school group exactly. uh, that has a lot of resources as well. And then the book is there as well. It's under uh, Social Circle <laughs> Manifesto. All right. For me, um, uh, you guys have incredible constructive answers. I can't wait for Grand Theft Auto 6 to come out and for us to have 30, <laughs> 30 person lobbies of nothing but MOA guys pulling off heists and like robbing people and running people over. That is absolutely, I know we're not we're supposed to be men of action, not play so many video games. Grand Theft Auto is mm -hmm. an exception. Um, so that that's one thing I'm looking for. I would like to, the company to get involved in real estate. I would like for us to start having units. Like again, one of the things I was gonna say is 27 years ago, I moved to Austin, Texas. Texas. I lived there for nine years and I would tell my family members and other people, I was like, Hey, don't tell anybody, but this is the greatest fucking city in the world. I cannot believe more people don't live here. This place is amazing. Now you live in Austin. Love the it. secret got out all of California moved to fucking Austin. I can't even live there anymore because mm -hmm. everybody's there. They still have like of the 10 best barbecue places in the world. Three of them are in Austin, yep. Texas. That is an I absolute, that one that is absolute fact yep. that uh, te three of them are in Austin, Texas. Absolutely incredible. And go Longhorns. Hey, can anybody check their phone and tell me what the number three team in the country is? <laughs> My phone isn't working real well. Could you anybody tell me? Somebody beat Alabama a couple weeks ago. Could somebody oh, tell let me know go. who they were? Uh, let me know who that was. Uh, so that's that's uh, one thing. But the same thing, just like uh, Austin was like this uh, this uh, keep, deeply kept secret, people are starting to figure out about Panorama Towers, dude. Like you live with your gym and have an HOA and like there's 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 five hot tubs and I'm talking to the, the, uh, the fucking HOA about, um, what's it called? A... Um, I know you have your own gym. Uh, I was talking to HOA about putting cold plunges in there and like mm. the place is just oh, awesome. Damn. I would love for us <laughs> to get involved in real estate and then for us to like basically yeah. start house hacking and start having the clients come live with us and live with each other or have the sales team, the entire sale. I would love to have the whole yeah. sales team, like have MOA dorms and have the whole. Now, I, obviously I'm a little different because I'm from the military and I loved living in barracks with yeah. other guys. I'm 46. Kylie's not the biggest fan of this, but like I really enjoy that. That's something I kind of would like to see. Uh, low ticket offer, obviously. I think that's going to be huge again for guys who are just in different socioeconomic situations for us to get involved with that. I also would like to, for us to affiliate and get involved with other people's programs, specifically if Dan Bilzerian comes out with one, I want to be a part of it specifically want to be involved in anything Fleischman does in the future. I think that's going to be uh, pretty huge for us. Uh, I talked to Andrew Tate two days ago about us going to Romania or maybe if he's not Romania somewhere else, maybe with me and Bradley going out there to do an interview with him. Uh, and then the other thing is, um, uh, us uh, possibly pivoting and doing other types of courses. Mm -hmm. There, uh, there are other courses on doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they'd be as good as ours is as far as getting guests because people are recommending sending out these like fucking emails from 1998. It's like, would you like this new guest? He's the fifth best cardiologist in Wichita. Can't like people are trying to buy a following. And I just think there's way better ways to get people on your podcast that I can teach. And I think that might be something. And then of course, a business course, I think is would ultimately be the end, a make money course. <clears throat> and in the make money course, we would include one of the things that I want to us to be different is the entire funnel or the entire process from start to finish on how we got to where we are yeah. when we're doing $10 million a year or 20 million a year. But in, di in addition to that, I also want to teach what happens in the VIP at excess and how do you connect with that person? How do you bump into Elon Musk? 
um, backstage at Burning Man? How do you end up at, at a Miami Swim Week sitting next to you know Jay-Z? How do you end up in all these situations talking to these high, super high status people? How do you guys end up like looking at a whiteboard at Dan Bilzerian's house? Yeah. These things, we take them for granted, but there's a methodology for you to be able to network with these people. How do you get on stage at Elevator Nights and how do you end up backstage with Jeff Bezos at a TED, TEDx talk? There's ways to do this. It's not just luck and that's what I'd like to teach in a course. Mm. I'd like to teach an, a business networking course yeah. followed by a full-on business course, very similar to $100 million leads, $100 million offer, but our $100 million leads, mm. our $100 million offer, basically teaching what we did. I would like for us to do that sometime in the that future, maybe three or four years in the future, maybe sooner. Something like that would be, I think, something that we could do just because um, we we're talking about things we've seen other people do. I've seen people just both ball face lie, say they make money they didn't make, or you know had success they didn't have. And like for us, I think the success we had is so real and so pervasive that if we just show the success we have, if you read hundred million dollar leads, he talks about this is how I did it. This is not the best way to get leads. This is not the best way to do an offer. This is how I did an offer and made hundred million dollars. And I feel like that's something that we could do in the future. So that's what I'd like to see, along with us playing you know flag football, MOA flag football. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm some, so down. So I'm so so. Down. so some MOA basketball like we got coming up Saturdays at Immersion. Uh, and then, you know, finally, like we, we deemed huge rooms of fucking guys on, on Grand Theft Auto. That's that's <laughs> that's my main thing. That's, I started this company just so I could have some friends on, on PS5. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining. This is exactly what I envisioned. I'm very happy. Uh, somebody who's outside of the company uh, watching and curious, number one, if you want to start your own company and you're curious about these growing pains, uh, it's something that we can definitely help you with. It's not it's not our primary thing that we're doing in the, in the course right now, but it's definitely something that you can help you with. For instance, if you join MOA, we're going to teach you a networking course, but if you pull me to the side and say, Michael, I want to start my own podcast. Can you help me with this? We don't have specific modules yeah, on podcasts. Clients in Las but, Vegas, but, yeah. se but several of our clients, we I've actually helped them start a podcast. If it's somebody, if you were to ask Grant, hey Grant, I'm trying to build my own funnel, we're we're definitely going to help you with that. If you want to ask him, it's like, hey man, I, I need help with our finance. He's definitely going to give you the answer. Hiring a sales team or any of those questions, any of those questions you have, if you join the course, because these are resources in our company, you get access to all these resources when you join our company. For Even sure. though we are primarily a high status networking course, you get access to all these things. For anybody who's watching watching this and like, like you are a high ticket closer. You're not being appreciated by the job that you have or you're selling something and you're kicking ass, but it bores the shit out of you and it is soul crushing selling your debt reconsolidation course or your course on how to fucking do wholesaling. And finally, you want to sell something that you actually believe in. Come just apply with us. Just go to moamentoring.com forward slash jobs and you guys can apply to work with us. Yes, I know we only hire 1%, but what does that tell you when 700 people are trying to apply to work for some lunatic like me, uh, you know, who, who makes videos on the internet. So that should tell you, like we have a really great con time, a really great culture. And if that's something you want to do, please let us know. And if you'd like to join Men of Action, guys, let us know. We have a free course. You guys can join and, ch and check it out. You guys are welcome to uh, go, go to our free school server. It's going to be school.com forward slash men LA. of action free. The link in the description. Yeah, there's a link in the description. It's going to be men of action free. There's a hyphen in between each word. A school, S-K-O-O-L.com forward slash men of action free. You guys can do that. And we are going to have the book list there. We're going to have the the schedule there, the calendar for all the events. We're going to have the free course there. And we're going to have the Instagram testimonials there along with the video testimonials that I haven't seen in a long time. Though we're gonna have those video testimonials like there too. There's two thousand members. Like there's, and there's so two, yeah, many people in there. There's that two thousand members in there. There's a ton. And the more we gamify it, the more you participate, the more your rank goes up. I think I'm the only 07 in the uh, in the course yeah. right <laughs> Like you get more value, you, you get more content unlocks, like the more yeah. engaged you are in the yeah. community. So yeah. you have like an extreme I love our community. Yeah, you start you start out. You start out as second lieutenant, and then you like I'm the only colonel in the thing, and I'm trying to get promoted. To, I'm trying to get promoted to general in my own in my own free server. I'm trying to get promoted. That's like that's how it works, Shout man. It's just Sam was up and Sam for sure we're, we need to make a new. Uh, well, like I said, we need to make you know all the categories. We need to make one. It's like a game of or what's it called? Uh, Grand Theft Auto. We need to get with that bottle. Grand Theft Auto rooms. Name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grand, Grand Theft Auto lobby. That's what we need to do. All right, guys. Thank you guys for for joining us. Thank you guys. This is episode 102. I'm very very happy that you guys stayed with us for. Uh, for two years that I've been doing this podcast, I really didn't think it would go this well. From my understanding, most podcasts don't get past episode 10. And one of the th great things about my company is that because this is lead gen for my company, I don't have to take sponsors and I don't have to worry about saying shit that might piss somebody off because they're friends with Logan Paul or they're friends with Adam 22, although I like Adam 22 and Logan Paul, but that I don't have to worry about the things that I say and I only have to worry about giving value to my clients. So thank you guys who have been part of Men of Action. Thank you guys who think about joining it. Thank you guys for been watching me for the last two years, and I will see you all next week.